Good morning to all. Please sit down. <laughs> Good morning to all. Hello, everyone. Please sit. Okay. We can start. We are waiting for some other colleagues, but we start. Okay, as a deputy rector and uh, on behalf of the rector of the Sapienza University of Rome, Professor Antonella Polimeni, a warm welcome to all the participants to this event on the perspective on geotechnical and structural monitoring for resilient natural and built environment. This event is organized by the Research Center of Sapienza CERI uh, on prediction, prevention, and mitigation of the geological risk, and co-organized by the company NATSCA, Natural Hazard Control and Assessment. Uh, it is a spin-off company of this university. Thank you to the director of the CERI, Professor Gabriele Scarascia Mugnozza, and to the organization of NATSCA, led by Professor Mazzanti. Thank you to Professor Sebastiano Rampello for his appreciated support as the head of the Structural and Geotechnical Engineering Department of the Sapienza University. Thank you to uh, the, all the numerous sponsors and supporters of the course. I hope that this morning you can enjoy the content of the four round tables, but I hope you can enjoy also this uh, auditorium named Aula Magna of this rectorate building uh, of this university and uh, this large fresco painted in 1935 by Mario Sironi and recently restored. It represents allegorically Italy, uh, the lady dressed in white, in white, between science on the left and arts on the uh, right. The participants uh, to this event uh, are instructors and researchers, policy makers and insurers, asset managers and contractors, manufacturers and service providers, all involved in geotechnical and structural monitoring. The presence here of these different, such different categories uh, involved in the monitoring uh, is the actual form and not an allegory as the fresco of the three missions of the university. The first, as you know, is the teaching. The second one is the research. And the third, uh, we name uh, this third mission exactly third mission, uh, is less known, but uh, uh, at present time it is very important for the university. The term mission of the university deals with valorization, dissemination, and transfer of knowledge, know-how, and technology for social changes by engaging and involving various communities, organizations, companies, governmental bodies, and institutions external to the academia. See here today in this uh, Aula Magna, this large parterre of professionals involved in such an important uh, topic devoted to the increase of the resilience either of uh, uh, the natural or the built environment, suggests us that the th third mission of the university is currently being implemented or uh, as a famous uh, uh, sentence, uh, we can. Finally, I wish everyone good work and I wish you a fruitful success of the discussion, also on behalf of the, our rector, Professor Antonella Polimeni. Thank you for your presence and uh, now the director of the CERI. Thanks a lot, Francesca, and uh, also by me, welcome, a warm welcome to Sapienza University, to this suggestive uh, main hall, Aula Magna. I am the director of the research center CERI, which is uh, an interdepartmental research center within Sapienza, and uh, it is joined by different departments, for instance, the department of uh, 
uh, Structural and uh, Geotechnical Engineering, the Department of Earth Sciences, the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering, but also the department involved in social and economical sciences. It is mainly involved uh, in uh, many researches which has the territory and uh, a, a lot of, of important uh, infrastructure, uh, infrastructures as, uh, in, uh, as uh, the topic of uh, these researches. I am sure that uh, this, um, this event is uh, an important event to uh, improve and increase the bridge between academia, between university, and uh, all the people involved in uh, um, construction and uh, all these other things, infrastructures, etc. So, once again, I warmly welcome you, and I'm sure that uh, this course will be very effective and very significant to increase this bridge, to, to gap this bridge. Thanks a lot, and uh, I wish you all the best in this university and in Roma. Thank you. Uh, ah, okay. Uh, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Italian Geotechnical Association, I'm very pleased to welcome you all to the ninth international course on geotechnical and structural monitoring. Monitoring, as you know, is becoming very important, I would say crucial, for a large number of applications, such as, uh, for example, the development of underground construction in urban environments, often in the presence of uh, valuable buildings and uh, historical monuments. The performance control of a large infrastructure as bridges, viaducts, and tunnels or the control of slope movements, just to do, so that, to do some example, uh, in case of uh, a landslide triggering uh, can cause serious damage to existing uh, structures and infrastructure. So we need uh, uh, to know what to measure and when, which equipment should be used, and how to interpret the measurements. At, at, at the end, we must arrive at uh, an uh, interpretative mo model. So a few things to do, as you see. I believe that the, this, the courses, uh, uh, like the one that is going to begin, make a valuable contribution to improving the ability of the practitioners uh, to understand the physics of the phenomena they are studying. I also believe that the discussion and the e exchange of ideas uh, will inspire and stimulate new ideas for the future application, making the, the success of the course. Now, we are going to start, I believe, so please enjoy the course. Yeah, good morning to anyone. I'm very happy to be here, and we are uh, running a little bit late as usual, but uh, I will try to give a good example, keeping very short. Uh, just to say a few words about the fact that we are the first time of several things. We have the ninth edition of the international course, but there are a lot of first times. For the first time yesterday, we were uh, in the Colosseum making a field trip right there. I think it was the first time for someone visiting inside the Colosseum, but it was just a second for me, so not, not so more. Um, and uh, it's the first time that uh, we are in this room. We started with a quite smaller room uh, nine years ago, ten years ago, to be honest. Uh, we were in, uh, uh, in Poppy, probably some of you, some old friends remember. We are inside a castle. Uh, now we are inside the largest university in Europe and, and of course, the largest in Rome. And, and this is another good point uh, to start. Uh, for the first time as well, uh, we decided to make um, part of this course for free. Uh, this uh, day is open all, not only to participants of the course, but to many other persons and participants uh, with the purpose to increase uh, the attention to this relevant topic that has been already outlined by uh, colleagues. So uh, I wish you all a uh, uh, pleasant morning and uh, also a pleasant uh, uh, afternoon uh, with the Expo that also in this case for the first time will be open uh, to anyone that would like to enjoy and to see some 30 companies that will show uh, tools and technologies for monitoring. So it's everything on my side. Thank you very much for being here.
we start with the first round table on the role of uh, instructor uh, researchers. Please, uh, Professor Giampiero Russo, uh, Professor uh, Werner Lienart, Professor Andrea Prota, and Professor Sebastiano Rampello. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Now I change the hat of, and uh, I wear the hat of the moderator of this uh, first round table, centered on the role of instructors and researchers. Academia and research institutions are responsible from one side for educating on specific topics of uh, geotechnical and structural monitoring at different levels of, co of uh, university courses, from bachelor to master to postgraduate courses uh, of specialization and finally to the PhD programs. From the other side, academia and the research institutions are responsible for supporting the improvement in this field with the result of the research and technological developments. The panelists I am going to introduce you are professor of some Italian and European university. We investigate together their role either at the teaching level on this matter, either at the research level. We will try to pass the torch to the other round the table, dealing with collaborative research with company, dealing with technological transfer, uh, for example, by patents, um, dealing with support to public authorities in their respective roles. The first one, uh, the, uh, the first one uh, uh, panelist is Gian Piero Russo, uh, full professor of foundation engineering in Polytechnic School of the Federico II uh, University in Naples. He is the coordinator of the master course on geotechnical engineering for design of infrastructure and of the same university. Uh, the second one is uh, Werner Lienart full professor of, um, and head of the Institute of Engineering and Geodesy and Measurement Systems at Graz University of Technology. Prior to this position, he was product manager innovation at the Leica Geosystem. The third one is Andrea Prota, uh, full professor of structural engineering at the Department of Structure for Engineering and Architecture at the University of Naples Federico II. Finally, Professor Sebastiano Rampello, uh, full, join, a, join our panelist group, is a full professor of geotechnical engineering at the University of Rome La Sapienza and the head of the Department of Structural and Geotechnical uh, Engineering. The other details of their CV you, um, you can read in the brochure of this event. Some words about me. Uh, I am an engineering geologist. I'm a professor of art science at the art science department of this university. Uh, I'm one among the professors of the master course on geology applied to the engineering, territory, and risk. My more advanced class in this master is focused on engineering geology for the design of structure and infrastructures. A recent important part of my research is focused on the monitoring of the natural and built environment as a tool to face with geological risk. I hope that uh, my role of moderator could emphasize, uh, could emphasize the interconnection between the, these two disciplines, uh, engineering from one side and geology from the other. Yeah, I trust on this concept. Okay, we can start with the round table with the first question for all the four panelists um, about uh, their role uh, as a teacher and their specialization as a, as a researcher. We can start with Professor Russo. Uh, we can change the slide, please. Okay, it's here. Uh, good morning to everybody. Thank you very much to the organization and uh, also to the um, Geotechnical Association. Uh, I am a member of the Council uh, Presidential Board and I am here as a, 
a professor in the University of Napoli and as a member of the association. Um, uh, well, uh, the, the, w when I start talking about the, the round table, um, and I was uh, coming here in La Sapienza, my mind went back to when I was a PhD student. Uh, at that time, I was a student in a consortium from Napoli and Roma, La Sapienza, and my supervisor were from Napoli, Professor Vigiani, and from Rome was Professor Burghignoli that has left us just uh, uh, one year ago, more or less. And <clears throat> well, I, re I remember very well that period. It was really uh, a very nice period for me. And I started to love monitoring because I was put on a, a experimental work looking at the behavior of a deep foundation of a cable state bridge in the south of Italy between Napoli and Rome, in the middle, more or less. <clears throat> that cable state bridge uh, uh, put me in contact with the building research establishment in London where people like uh, Gavin Price, Bob Cook, even John Barland had started to monitoring real world infrastructures. And they came in, in, in Italy and they, they teach me a lot of stuff. And more, moreover, I remember, uh, the, the fact that I remember very well is that they uh, teach me how to love sensors, how to uh, play uh, passionately with them and how to try to understand even uh, minor details. Because very often the lessons learned from these applications are buried into the data. And our, our research has to look at the data with the curiosity and uh, trying to deep understand what's going on. And uh, mm, well, uh, I have uh, been involved in a lot of uh, underground development in the city of Napoli later on, so I moved from deep foundation to underground excavations later, and at the moment I am more involved into channeling and deep shaft excavation monitoring. Um, as a teacher, I teach uh, foundation courses and underground construction courses in two different positions, and when I think to the role we have in the in the university as a teacher, I think that the best uh, statement I could do on that is that we should try to be teachers always with the state of the mind of a researcher. Because we cannot be good teachers if we do not research something. And the other thing is that we have to make our students grow up with uh, uh, curiosity in a stimulating environment and uh, that is possible only if you do research at the same time while you do teaching and vice versa. So there is a continuous osmosis between these two fields of my activities. Um, well, I think that may be enough for me. Okay. Thank yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it's a great pleasure for me to be here and talk a little bit about the, uh, my point of view and a few things that were already brought up. So one was bridging academia and industry, also the role of a researcher and student. So first, maybe to talk about what's, how is a project different between a research project and an industry project and where you draw the line, what belongs to the university and what belongs to a company. Everyone, every professor, defines the line by himself, and the way that I see it as a university professor, we do things which are not, not state-of-the-art yet. Everything which is state-of-the-art should be done by a company, so we don't want to compete directly with the company. But on, the, on the other hand, if nothing that we do becomes state-of-the-art in five or ten years, we have missed our target as well. So we are allowed to do crazy stuff, innovative stuff, we are allowed to fail, but some things have to arrive in industry as well. Otherwise, we have not fulfilled our purpose. And how this bridge can be made, maybe three different ways. There are, more, there are several ways, but maybe I would like to talk about three different ways. And um, the first way also indicated a little bit on the picture on the left-hand side is how the transfer can happen. Um, so as a university, we have ideas. We can try out things, and very often it starts with a publicly funded project. So in this case, it's the installation of fiber optic cables in the outer lining of a uh, tunnel. Um, so first, it's publicly funded. If it is successful, very often the next step is 
that it ends up being still a research project, but now maybe funded by the railway operator. And if this is successful, then it's maybe the time to get it somehow in industry. And that somehow is always the big challenge, how you can do that. And what we see is then one big problem is when you want to get innovation into real projects is it should not be just a special solution. It has to be part of the normal tender, part of their guidelines. And that's basically what we are working here on as well, is that we're trying to get things, if they're successful, into guidelines so they, they become an um, accepted alternative solution, not some special solution that you have to apply every time in you. Um, but I know there are some people in the audience who work on guidelines and standards. You need a very long breath. You must not be frust getting frustrated easily. So it's not such an easy way. But I think that's one important way how to bring things into industry to make proof of concepts uh, at the university, and if they are successful, trying to get them into guidelines. And obviously, you have to work closely together also with companies in that sense. Um, the second path, maybe, let's say you have a solution and no one is taking it on. It's successful, and we had the situation, we got requests, but we have written enough publications about that. There's no research there anymore, but we still get requests, and no company is taking that solution up. And then it's maybe the same path that NASCAR did it over here, is you found your own, you uh, found your own spin off company. So basically, that's what we've done in some sort of monitoring that we also have founded our own spin off company, ACI monitoring. That's why this one is on the uh, slide up here. Um, and maybe the third one, the third way how to get innovation in industry is by our students. So every year, motivated young, talented people come to us, and it's our responsibility to teach them and also teach them in monitoring. Um, at Graz University of Technology, we uh, managed to get monitoring in every part of the civil engineering master's program. So in the geotechnical and hydraulic master, we have geotechnical monitoring. In the structural master, we have structural health monitoring. And so our students learn uh, innovative things. Uh, we also link research to our uh, teaching but then maybe they end up in a very conservative construction company right after their courses. Um, what's remarkable, since I'm now a professor since 10 years, after these people, they may not be able to apply their knowledge directly when they start working, but after a few years, they grow up in that company and become it into a decision level. And suddenly, I meet now people, my former students at construction sites, and they are now still have those ideas back in their mind, and now they apply it. Again, the turnover time is five to 10 years, so you need a long breath in all that we do, but our structures do have to live long as well. So that's a few comments from my side. Good morning, thank you. Um, so my train was a little bit late, so I, I, have no sli I have slides, but we have not uploaded the slides, so I, I will have an extra challenge to talk without slides, which I think it's, it's, it's okay. Thanks for, uh, for inviting me. Um, as Francesca said, I, uh, I come from the University of Naples as uh, uh, Gian Piero Russo, and uh, I am a structural engineer. Uh, I have experience uh, dealing with the monitoring in my teaching, uh, uh, but um, in this uh, very um, short uh, speech, I will uh, share with you some experiences coming from research, and particularly from two um, project, projects that, that are ongoing. The first one is uh, a project funded uh, to RELUIS, which is a network of um, uh, universities in Italy dealing with structural and uh, earthquake engineering. And this project is funded by the Department of uh, Civil Protection. Within this project, we have a, a work package uh, um, which deals with uh, uh, monitoring and um, satellite data. Uh, actually, we have a, the group of, uh, from Rome, uh, Francesca, Gabriele, Scarascia, and other colleagues uh, joining the group mainly of engineers and uh, structural and geotechnical engineers. And uh, this, um, um, this um, uh, work package uh, uh, was uh, introduced a few years ago uh, to um, send a message, send out a message to the community of uh, stakeholders. And I think this is something that is interesting to share with you. Because in Italy, a few years ago, someone uh, was trying to 
convey a message that using uh, uh, satellite data, it could be possible to have a, a survey of the uh, capacity of buildings under earthquake. So someone was saying, using the data f coming from the satellite, using uh, interferometry, we can have the, um, a, a, an idea of which is the, the seismic performance of buildings. Of course, this is wrong. And uh, of course, monitoring uh, using satellite data cannot be used for uh, um, events like earthquake that happen in a few seconds. Whereas, as all you, you all know, monitoring with those data can be very useful for problems related to landslides or other uh, uh, slow phenomena. So, based on this, we introduced this, uh, this project. We are working all together. And um, I think it, what is very mm, interesting is the, is the intersection, the trying to put together and maximize the information coming from traditional monitoring, that, uh, the, the monitoring we can get with the sensor installed in, uh, on uh, structures, on tunnels, with the data coming from the satellite. So we are working a lot on this, and we are also developing guidelines to support practitioners on this uh, issue. Second, uh, very quick, uh, is an experience that I'm doing as a president of the foundation that is uh, running a very large project in Italy, is an extended partnership uh, within the plan for, um, uh, for resilience for uh, uh, PNRR. And um, here we are working together also with the, the University of Roma La Sapienza is one of the major partners. And we are dealing with uh, natural, environmental, and man-made risks. And um, in, the, in the declaration of the project, uh, when the ministry issued the call, there were four words uh, about risk, preparedness, prevention, uh, management, and monitoring. And uh, it was stressed that the need for an holistic and multidisciplinary approach. I think events like today um, help us to uh, go into, into that, the, that direction and to um, stress the concept that monitoring cannot be uh, by itself something that can be used, but monitoring should be uh, conceived in this cycle uh, because then the meaning of monitoring and also the message that we, go, we give to stakeholders or clients should be motivated. So it's very uh, critical to understand what we are monitoring and which is the, the meaning of the monitoring, especially for stakeholders dealing with the management, like municipalities, regions, on the other, other stakeholders that are managing the civil protection. I think I stop in time. Okay. Uh, I, I will start just with, with an example before to, to give you some question, to pose some question. Uh, this is an example of motoring in urban area uh, in San Giovanni here in Rome where a uh, deep open excavation has been carried out. And this is uh, an example of the kind of results that, that we can obtain to uh, observe the effect induced by the excavation in uh, the Aurelian wall at uh, Porta Asinaria. Uh, now, about the role of uh, teacher and researcher, uh, we need to uh, describe the instruments, of course, but we have to give uh, the fundamental uh, theoretical basis to interpret the data. Uh, Professor Barland used to say, uh, data speak us, but we have to understand what they are saying. So uh, we have to have some, some framework uh, to understand physical phenomena. And uh, uh, if we go to the second slide, uh, no, no, <laughs> the, word, the word, the question, okay. Okay, at the end. <laughs> okay, okay. Uh, uh, let me, me add something about monitoring. In Italy there is, uh, I think, a problem. Monitoring is done by the general contractor of similar uh, fears, uh, but I think that this is not good. Monitoring should be done by an independent entity. I don't know what, but this is a problem that we have in Italy, and we um, could, could discuss about this. Uh, and uh, uh, often, uh, monitoring data are given as uh, time history of measurements, uh, but we need isochrons. Uh, isochrons are, is, uh, as the one uh, shown there, 
allow, allow to understand uh, the pattern of behavior of the uh, um, structure that we are monitoring uh, and help to understand better the behavior uh, uh, that must be compared with pre our prediction because always monitoring and prediction must be uh, face each other. I finish here. Okay. Thank you. A very quick uh, second question about the future perspective of uh, geotechnical monitoring and uh, in uh, which way, in what way we can uh, um, improve the, the bridge between academia and research institution and the other figure involved in this uh, matter. I start from uh, Professor Russo. Okay. Thank you again. Yeah, we are running out of time as usual, so I will be short. Um, just, um, 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 well, I, I am uh, working at the moment mainly as a consulting of some uh, managing authorities that have to carry out, uh, that have to run their business. The business is to, um, they have to handle, they have to manage their infrastructures safely, looking at the future. And there is also a huge investment program coming out from the national strategies uh, on the maintenance of these infrastructures. Uh, at the moment, uh, the main question that many uh, authorities ask me is uh, to respond to, to answer to this question. Um, how can we predict in the future the maintenance to be done in our infrastructures? And uh, the, this uh, predictive maintenance is an old concept, is already old, but as a matter of fact, in practice, there is not much uh, to say because we have not yet the tools, the practical tools, to, uh, on which basing the uh, maintenance program on an infrastructure. At the moment, we are implementing many monitoring plans on different um, installations on tunnels and on uh, excavations, generally speaking, trying to look at the sensor uh, data in the future with the prediction algorithm. In this sense, uh, big data, artificial intelligence and machine learning are supporting a lot of uh, recent researches in this area. And uh, I think that, uh, uh, of course, the old technology should not be abandoned because, as I showed before, uh, the installation in the Garigliano Bridge at the foundational level is still working after 29 years, 30 years of sensors working. That's a sort of Guinness. They were vibrating while load cells. They are still there. I get data and I showed some data at the recent TC committee in, uh, in London in September. Um, old technology and new technology have to be compared because uh, reliability is a must, and the reliability of new technology has to be compared with the old one. And the other thing is long-term lasting installations and uh, um, uh, reliability in the interpretation. Uh, that's uh, something, uh, there are three main concepts on which uh, anything has to be based in the future in order to support these authorities in establishing a reliable maintenance program on their infrastructure. And we are here as a university to support them, of course. Thank you very much. Okay, so the answer should be short. So it's money, data, and artificial intelligence. Okay, um, just to explain a little bit what I mean by that. So uh, the problem with monitoring is, is regarding money is when is money for monitoring available after the catastrophic event? That's one problem that we always have to deal with. Only after something bad has happened, you suddenly have money, and it's difficult to keep then that money flow for a long period of time. Um, so we are monitoring the landslide that you see here since 1999, and at the moment we are funding it ourselves. Last year it was really interesting again because we had a huge acceleration. Suddenly everyone wanted to have the data that we are collecting for them for free. So the long-term funding uh, is a problem. And regarding research, it's a data-driven research. And what we see nowadays with satellite-based techniques like, like uh, radar measurements, that many people work on the same data and you make progress when people do that. Uh, with conventional sensors, 
everyone has to collect the data by themselves and everyone is sticking to his own data. So it's almost impossible to share data. And we are trying also to work on this uh, aspect a little bit, but it's sometimes you have challenges that you have never even thought of. For instance, we are working on um, monitoring of a water dam in pump storage operation. So basically the same water is used several times. So um, when uh, no power is needed, the water is used, being pumped up again, and then with the same water, electricity is produced again. So we have really very interesting data. Unfortunately, I cannot show it, not even on this slide here. And the point is not dam safety. So we always thought, okay, it's difficult because the local uh, community can be worried about the dam safety. To be honest, no one there cares about dam safety. People are worried that they can, someone can read the economic data from our monitoring data, that someone can see how they make money, how often they pump up water up and down. So no one cares about safety. So from the safety point of view, we could always share the data. It's the economics which cause a problem there. Um, that's the second point. And the third point about artificial intelligence or machine learning. So nowadays, it's almost impossible to get the research grant without using either one of those words. So we also use them as well. But um, it works well for things like crack monitoring, for identifying traffic, what type of traffic is going over a bridge. But it's difficult to say, yes, this will avoid catastrophic events. Because what you need for training such a machine learning algorithm is a lot of data, a lot of annotated data, but fortunately we don't have a lot of data of bridge collapses or landslides falling down. We have some data, but we don't have thousands or hundreds of thousands of um, data points of such catastrophic events. So it's different than detecting image of a cat, because you have millions of images of cats, but we don't have, fortunately, such huge amount of data of catastrophic events. So artificial intelligence and machine learning is helpful, but be aware when you want to say this will avoid catastrophic failures. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, quick, quick um, answer to your question. Uh, I will speak in general about monitoring uh, as a structural engineer. Uh, engineer. Um, actually, I follow up on, on, uh, on your uh, uh, thought because we um, we face now a big uh, challenge uh, that comes from um, the the, um, the world of uh, stakeholder um, and all the other um, uh, agency that are managing uh, infrastructures, which is uh, about monitoring. Which are the thresholds, the, which comes by, uh, to your uh, your thought? Because uh, I think we have a lot of sensor in terms of typologies and number. We have uh, artificial intelligence, we have uh, machine learning. So people now has this problem. We have a lot of data, which is the meaning, which is the message for the user. And uh, so uh, I, to, for, to us, the question is, which is the threshold? Because I think even to determine if artificial intelligence can support to prevent a, a failure, all comes down to the threshold. Where do you stop? Where do you send the, the alert to the, the manager? And uh, so to close this short question uh, and to, to answer to this uh, question, um, to all the world of geology and also civil engineering, um, we should recognize the competence of what with Francesca I called the domain because we, are, we have the knowledge about the behavior of landslides the behavior, how a bridge works, how an infrastructure behaves. So this is the, the field of knowledge of geology and uh, civil engineering. And uh, there is, a, to me, a big need to interact with people from the IT, which uh, uh, give us the availability of sensor and also methodologies like uh, how to process data, how to uh, use inter, inter artificial intelligence, but uh, we need to recognize that the competence of, who, uh, of people that know how the, 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 this uh, uh, domain behave is important. Otherwise, uh, we risk the, what I hear from the outside that people which is only um, uh, aware of IT think that they can monitor something, but then at the end, the monitoring has no meaning. So we cannot just put sensors all over. 
or we can just sell a sensor because it's new and then at the end uh, we, we don't have the answer. The answer can be given by the old geology and uh, structural or geotechnical engineering to me. And uh, this is now, I think, the, the right um, uh, relationship between uh, geology, civil engineering, and uh, in general, uh, IT science. Thank you. Okay, uh, here there are some of the points I anticipated before. Who performs monitoring um, should be done by a uh, different subject than the people that do the work. But this is already, I already said the, this. And uh, at, at, at the end, um, we should be able with monitoring to understand uh, the link between the cause and the effect. And at the, uh, at the end, following what Professor Pozzo was saying before, uh, measurements must be compared with some prediction, and we need always an interpretative model. Data speak us, but uh, we must understand what they are saying. Otherwise, monitoring is uh, unuseful. And I will, would finish here because we are already late, so I, I can be shorter than the other speakers. Thank you. Unfortunately, we are uh, late, then we have to finish. Thank you for your inspiring answer, and I hope in the next day we, we can go deep in uh, this matter. Thank you very much. And uh, the next round table, please, Gabriele. So now let can you hear me? Yeah. So please, I invite here the panelists of the second round table, please. Alessandro Palmieri, Daniel Ortelli, Walter Steiner, Andrew Ridley, Luca Guerrieri, Luigi Tatarelli, and Giuseppe Palermo, please, on the stage. Thanks a lot. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, of course. There is an order. But you can, okay, okay, you can just do it and then I, I know what, what is the order, so I will. Okay, please have a seat, thanks, thanks a lot. This round table, we will try to keep, to be in time, is about the role of policymakers and insurers. I will immediately uh, go to the, in, to introduce the panelists, so, Alessandro Palmieri on my right. Alessandro Palmieri is a civil engineer with about 50 years of experience worldwide in water infrastructure planning and de development. He has been the lead dam specialist in the World Bank from 97 to 2013. And currently he is an independent advisor to multilateral development banks. Thanks a lot, Alessandro, for joining us. Then we have Daniele Ortelli. He is the head of risk and engineering and loss prevention of a generally global corporate Italia since 2013, but he has been in the same generali group since 92, and he has got the degree in economics at the University of Venice, Ca' Foscari. Then we have Walter Steiner, thank you, Walter, PhD in geotechnical engineering at MIT. He has 50 years of ex professional experience in the design of geotechnical aspects for infrastructures, rail and road tunnels in soil and rock, dams and slope. Since 2010, he has been the convener of the ISO TC 182, working group two on geotechnical monitoring. And then we have Andrew Ridley. Thanks, Andrew. And he is the civil engineer and managing director of Geotechnical Observations Limited, he has about 40 years of professional experience, just 10 less than Walter. And uh, so very, very, very high proficiency. He is the UK representative on ISO TC 182 Working Group 2, which is drafting, this is very important, international standards for geotechnical instrumentation and monitoring. And is the chair of ISS MG Technical Committee on Field Monitoring in geomechanics. Luca Guerrieri. Hi, Luca. Thanks a lot for coming here. 
PhD in Geological Sciences. He is at the Geological Survey of Italy, which is a branch of the Italian Institute for Environmental Protection and Research. Since 2022, he is the scientific coordinator of the project Geosciences IR, which is founded by Next Generation EU program, gathering and coordinating the, geological the regional geological survey in Italy. And then we have, last but not least, thanks a lot for coming here, Luigi Tatarelli. Hi, Luigi. PhD in civil engineering is from the Italian Agency for the Safety of Railway and Road Infrastructures, very difficult acronym, ANS FISA, and head, he is head of the Railway Infrastructure Task Force, and is also author of guidelines on the management of railway infrastructures and members of many working group on, on these. And then Giuseppe Palermo, thanks a lot for joining us. PhD in civil engineering, he works at the same Italia, Italian agency like Luigi Tatarelli, and is involved in the development of the safety management system for road infrastructure and the inspections on bridges. Thanks a lot, I will uh, start uh, with a game, you know, I asked you, and I will ask you, if I say monitoring, hashtag monitoring, what is the first answer that comes to your mind? So please, Alessandro, you first, very quickly. The first word. Life insurance. Life insurance, great. And so please, after, after Alessandro, please, Andrew. Knowledge. Knowledge. Please, Daniele. Uh, one word, uh, awareness. Three words, awareness, our time. Thanks a lot. Luca. Two words, reliable Luca. assessment. Reliable assessment, okay, thanks. Walter. Uh, we always do it. We always do monitoring. Okay, thanks a lot. I, I think a large amount of data large amount of data. And last, Giuseppe, please. Investigate and control. Investigate and control. Okay, it was just uh, a game, but I think it uh, can be interesting for you. Okay, now let's go to the... Who won the game? Who won the game? I don't know, please, you, you, you will say who, who won the game. We, you all won the game. We hope so. So, coming to the... To the uh, first uh, question uh, about the state of the art uh, in your field. Of course, policymakers, insurers are really important actors in uh, the field of, uh, as we said, construction, infrastructure, and first of all, safety. So please, Alessandro, what would you like to say to us? Well, in terms of uh, state of the art, uh, uh, I think the most important thing is to continue learning. Uh, when you say state of the art, it means you put a, a point, you know? It's not like this. It's continuous learning in any field, especially in mine, I mean, dealing with water infrastructure at international level. Um, if I can say something uh, specifically on safety of water infrastructure from the perspective of the institution we, where I worked, uh, for 17 years uh, is that uh, in the World Bank uh, that uh, having uh, an instrumentation plan is the key, is part of the policy of this institution, but the instrumentation plan is linked to an operational maintenance plan and to an emergency response plan, which is something we learned, we heard from the session before. So I think these are the key elements to keep in mind. The instrumentation by itself, it, it, it remains just uh, an academic exercise uh, is useless. Maybe use, useful for other purposes, but uh, to assess uh, the reliability of structures, uh, it must be linked to other actions. You must learn what to do and how to do it. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Then, then now is the turn of Daniele Ortelli, please. Thanks, uh, thanks uh, to Paolo and all his colleagues for the inviting. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, even uh, in this case, uh, th three um, challenging, three 
ma macro trend that uh, are, uh, that we need to manage. Uh, the first one probably is uh, the climate change. The climate change is relevant for us, uh, relevant of course for the insurers. Mm -hmm. And there is uh, the, the issue of the, the catastrophic events. Uh, you can uh, think to, to flood, uh, to heavy rain, uh, to tornado, to hurricane and so on. Another uh, relevant issue is uh, the pandemic and the extreme events. Uh, we have uh, to thought that all the world uh, is uh, connected. We are in a global world, uh, so there is uh, the problem and the issue of the um, globalization and the systemic risk. If uh, we have, uh, for example, uh, the, the pandemic, we have the pandemic around the world. If uh, we have uh, in a big event in an port in Tianjin, like uh, uh, several years ago, we have uh, the issue around the world. Another big uh, problem for us uh, that we need to, 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 to fight and we, we need to, to, to manage is the, geolo um, the uh, geopolitical and financial instability. This is uh, a, a an issue that uh, a, a relevant connection with uh, uh, the, uh, the business interruption, if you think, uh, to the um, furniture, to, to, sorry, to the providers, uh, and uh, so on uh, with uh, the inflation, that the inflation could have effect uh, only in the, um, so our life, in, uh, in the so, so with the social connection and so on. All these are uh, issues that uh, we need to manage. Uh, and these uh, for us uh, are mega trends uh, that we have to effort for the next uh, few years. Thanks a lot, Daniele, for this uh, broad and large perspective for us. Now, Walter, please. Okay. This is a picture of the Shalom Gorge, and I go back a little bit in history because the Gotthard Pass and the Shalom Gorge were not uh, passable by the Romans was only opened around the 10th century after Christ, and the people had to enter in a pact with the devil. So they contracted the devil to build them a bridge, which is just upside um, these uh, road sections, and the devil wanted to have the first soul that passed the bridge. But they didn't send over a person, so they sent over a goat. And then uh, he became angry, and then uh, a rock fall happened, and down near the portal of the road and rail tunnel in Gushen, there is the Devil's Stone. But uh, coming back to it, I have been working on this uh, area here, and it has a lot of challenges, geotechnical, and then you have to make observation, and in some cases you do monitoring now, and it was a very instructive case, and I think you have to have standards so that you talk about uh, the same thing, so you can communicate. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Walter. And now it's the turn on the stage of Andrew, Andrew Ridley. Oh. Thanks a lot. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I'm here representing, as has been mentioned, um, the International Society of Soil Mechanics and Geotechnical Engineering, and in particular TC220. Um, this was formed in 2019, actually in a restaurant not very far from here, uh, where I met with Giorgio and Paolo and with Peter Lamb and with uh, Paul, Paul Burton. Um, I can't see them in the audience yet, but uh, they're, they're around. Ah, up at the back, there we go. Um, we sat down, we had dinner, and we discussed this idea of having a technical committee of the International Society. I approached um, the International Society, the um, president at the time, Charles Ung, who I, who I know quite well, and he was very supportive of it. So to date, we have 60 members um, across 25 countries. The aims of this technical committee, um, which is the relevance of me speaking here now, are to organize conferences. Um, there's been a conference in this uh, community since about the late 1970s, early 1980s. Uh, it runs every four years. Uh, it's become known as FMGM. Um, but it had a, an unstable sort of uh, platform. It, it, you never quite knew where it was going to go next. Now we have a very stable situation because we have an election each four years and we have a bid process to make sure that we um, we have a, a process we can go through to, to find the next, the next place. Uh, talk about more, more about that in the next part. 
Um, we're also there to encourage keynote lectures, which are uh, part of that, uh, that conference. We set up the, um, the, the, the Dunnicliffe Honor Lecture. Um, many of you will know, have known John Dunnicliffe. He sadly passed away in the last few years. Um, but we, we've set up the, the Dunnicliffe Honor Lecture, and the first of those was given at the International Symposium last uh, September in, in London uh, by Alan Ma, and the next one will be at the next symposium uh, when that happens in, in 2026. Um, we're also there to promote, um, in other ways, the, uh, the use of field, field measurements, and again, I'll talk more about that in the, in the second part. Um, but one of the other primary areas, the uh, things that we set as our target was to develop a website. And the website is there, you can see a, a, uh, a slide from it here, um, where we've put the, uh, all the proceedings from the recent symposium, um, they're on there. There are links to uh, companies that have uh, sponsored the formation of this, this website. Um, there are links to uh, papers and other useful reading information. Um, and, and in particular, there's one area that we're going to try and promote, which is the use of case histories. Um, and again, I'll talk more about that in the, in the second part. Uh, so I think that's me back. Okay. Thanks a lot, Andrew. Just let me ask you, what about the menu of that dinner, that inspiring dinner here in Roma? Sorry? What about the menu? The what menu. did you have for, for dinner? Very inspiring. <laughs> Carbonara, matriciana. So we know for the next time, I mean. Menu, but it was very good. It was pizza. It was ah, OK. Fast. It was just pizza. Ah, so it's very easy. OK, thanks a lot. Actually, if you go to the website, there's a nice picture on the opening page of the four or five of us sat around the table. So OK, so all, all we, we will visit the website. Recognize the restaurant and you get a prize. <laughs> thanks a lot. Please, Luca, it's your turn. OK, thank you, Gabriele, for the invitation. As you said, uh, I'm uh, representing ISPRA, which is the, uh, includes the Italian Geological Survey. I uh, want to say something about the perspective of geological surveys, not only the national one, but also the regionals. Uh, as we are the final users of most monitoring uh, data for, uh, to, for any, the responsibility, especially the regional surveys have responsibility of uh, a geohazard assessment in a regional level. And uh, uh, let me say something about uh, the Italian uh, network of regional geological surveys that have been established in uh, 2018. Uh, everybody knows it uh, about uh, the CARG project, uh, the geological mapping <laughs> at 50,000 scale, at least geologists, not maybe <laughs> it's very famous, but uh, there are many other uh, joint activities that have been uh, conducted in uh, this uh, network. And now we have uh, 12 uh, thematic tables, thematic boards. Uh, but the, what is, uh, among them, the most interesting for monitoring are uh, the thematic board on landslides and the other one on Copernicus, uh, the Earth observation. And uh, let me uh, say in uh, one minute uh, the, the something about a, a, a project that has been uh, funded by Next Generation Europe that is named Geosciences, that has uh, the ambitious uh, uh, goal to put together uh, academic uh, institutions with, uh, 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 that provide uh, data, including monitoring, monitoring data and knowledge to regional geological surveys to build a research infrastructure and uh, as you see in the slide, some examples of products that uh, have been, uh, w will be uh, done uh, to support uh, the, the work of uh, regional geological surveys in the frame of uh, landslides monitoring. You see national database of landslides in the monitoring system. Uh, I, I cannot have time to read, but you see in the slide. And also on the other side, on the earth observation, uh, some example of uh, uh, products uh, that will be uh, implemented uh, during the project. Thank you. Thank you, Luca, for this information, which makes sense on the activity within the it's important next, next generation, new generation project. So now I am Thank happy you. to have some uh, insights and from the perspective of a, a national agency like the one you, you work for. Please. Please, Thank Luigi. You. 
Uh, Asfisa is a, um, a young agency that started to operate at the end of the 2020. And uh, we have a very light uh, um, structure because uh, we are about 300 pe <coughs> people. And then we are very, very light. Uh, and, uh, and, uh, but uh, we are not uh, a branch of my ministry of transport and, and infrastructure, but, but the ministry only supervise to supervise the, the activities of agency. Okay, and uh, we have uh, three areas of activity, and we work about uh, railways, uh, road and waterways, and fixed installations. And uh, my colleague Giuseppe will talk uh, will talk to you about uh, road and and uh, motorways, and uh, I will talk about railways. And uh, in railways field, we oper we supervise. Uh, the, uh, the whole system uh, from uh, high speed line to tourist lines and uh, we, mm, we supervise uh, uh, infrastructures, vehicles and uh, op operation. And um, uh, agency aims to have an harmonized approach uh, in, the, in uh, all the, this area of activities. But uh, there are uh, a lot of specificity in, uh, in the area, and then it's important to, to separate our speech to better illustrate and understand the, the, this, uh, this specificity. Um, next. Okay, next slide. Next. Next slides, please. Okay. Okay. Uh, focusing on railway, we have uh, three. Uh, we have to understand uh, three base elements: uh, the the regulatory framework that is um, that is uh, composed by directives, regulation, and guidelines issued by the um, European Union and, uh, and the European Railway Agency. Because uh, the, in the target system for, uh, for the sea by the European vision, there are not national rules in railway. Okay. And um, another pillar is the safety management system because uh, uh, based on uh, this European framework, uh, infrastructure managers and railway undertakings, undertakings must have and, uh, an, um, a safety management system that um, based on the cycle, cycle de on damming and then on the continuous improvement. Okay. Okay. A another important, uh, important uh, mm, aspect is uh, the concept that zero risk don't exist, doesn't exist, but we have to talk only about an acceptable level of risk. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thanks a lot. It, this is a very challenging uh, mission and task that you have, this, this agency has. Please, okay. Giuseppe. On the side of oh, uh, road infrastructures. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, for what concerns uh, motorway and road infrastructures, the agency has the main task to perform audits to supervise the managers, inspections on infrastructures and structures, promotion of the adoption of a suitable safety management system, activities focused on increasing the safety in general, standardization of the key technical activities such as performing inspection and monitoring bridges and tunnels, active, active participation in technical working groups, study, research, and experimental activities. It is important to highlight that the uh, activity carried out by the agency regard a huge number of kilometers of motorway and roads, about uh, eight hundred forty thousand uh, around the main five percent of motorway and road network have more than twenty five thousand bridges and two thousand tunnels 
In order to provide the various road uh, infrastructure manager with the standardized and complete uh, procedure, multi-level and multi-risk, the Italian government in 2020 adopted the guidelines for the risk management of existing bridges. Such guidelines are based on the more important regulation of the sector and are focused on the creation of a uniform classification system and maintenance approach for bridges. The same has been done recently for tunnels as well. For these new guidelines and in general for the evolution of the matter, the monitoring is becoming increasingly important in order to perform a continued supervision of the infrastructure okay. safety. However, the monitoring <coughs> activities have to be opportunely considered in the SMS adopted by the manager. Safety first. Yeah. Safety first, always. The first As also, okay, thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you all for this uh, state of the art and for letting us know about uh, all the activities and carrying which are, have been carried out and so the state of the art. So now let's come very quickly to some suggestion about future perspectives from your side please alessandro in the same in the same order alessandro oh yes sorry please so <coughs> what about the future perspective what about what what about the future well i would say let's start from what i consider situation in which we are not there yet i mean well there is margin for progress first of all uh, i call it instrumentation conservation plan uh, what about the lifespan of instruments? Very different from instrument to instrument, of course. And the lifespan of the infrastructure that we build always exceeds the lifespan of instruments. Inevitably, this is a fact. So how can we ensure that we have a meaningful flow of information from different instruments, monitoring devices, around the life of this infrastructure. That's why I was saying life insurance. But provided that you have reliable instruments and people who can interpret them, uh, that would be my, my first suggestion, instrumentation plan, conservation plan. Maintenance. Uh, well, maintenance no? and replacement maintenance? as well. Because there are in, in dams, for example, uh, you install a lot of instruments because the critical phase is when you first fill the reservoir. But these instruments have a lifespan of five, ten years. I'm looking at my colleague Giorgio Pezzetti, you know, we discussed about this. Um, but the lifespan of a dam can be 100 years. So how you cannot expect that uh, uh, vibrating wire piezometer or electrical piezometer accompanies the life of them. No way. You must have this transition and you must have some intervention at some point in time to adapt the instrument to the uncertainty that remain. Because remember, a design and construction and maintenance process is always managing uncertainties. You have uncertainties at the design stage that you have to turn into elements on the operational maintenance plan. During construction, you, have, you find other things and you have to turn in the operation. So it's continually managing uncertainties. You are nev never quite there. And then maybe the, the other point I will underline, since there are a lot of academics here, that traditionally in structural and technical engineering, we have been uh, taught at university, and many people still practice, to design by stresses, you see, coming from the tradition of steel. Uh, actually, what we measure is deformation all the time. So if we have an approach of designing by deformation, then you have the meeting between uh, instrument readings, uh, monitoring, and the sign phase. I would point out these two elements. Thanks a lot for these inspiring uh, suggestions and uh, thoughts. Daniele, what about uh, the future according to your experience within the insurance uh, side of the, of the moon? Thanks. Uh, before I uh, speak uh, about uh, the, the the three challenging, the, the, the first one, of course, uh, climate change, uh, the, the, the second, uh, the systemic risk, uh, geopolitical, uh, geo uh, sorry, geopolitical risk with the, 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 the issue of the supply chain and this uh, interruption. How the we can manage uh, and we can effort uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, uh, 
challenging. Uh, we have a, a lot of opportunities, like mentioned in the uh, previous uh, uh, roundtable by uh, the other colleagues. Uh, of course, uh, we have uh, the, the, the big role of the innovation, the, the big role in the innovation and the digital uh, tra transformation. Again, uh, we have uh, the artificial intelligence. Of course, uh, we have to manage well the, the, the artificial intelligence. We have uh, the, uh, the, the, the big uh, availability of data, so the advanced analytics for, for the huge uh, uh, data that uh, we have and uh, we can manage. Moreover, uh, we have uh, the opportunity, the big of opportunity of the Internet of Things, uh, and of course, uh, uh, we have the opportunity of the um, uh, satellite monitoring. For us, uh, it could be another interesting, uh, very useful uh, uh, tools uh, yeah. the, the for, uh, to, to manage the risk. The, the, the second uh, big uh, uh, trend uh, for, for us, uh, of course, uh, in the, the risk management. The risk management is uh, the, the most relevant uh, things, uh, the most relevant uh, uh, point. Uh, uh, we have uh, to get awareness of the risk, as I mentioned at the, before, at the beginning. Uh, it's very relevant uh, to assess uh, the risk, so an analyze, evaluate, and again, uh, to uh, prevent and protect the risk. And again, monitoring. So it is uh, the, 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 the circle of, uh, of uh, the, the managing of the risk. So as I mentioned before, safety first. It's a, a, a very uh, relevant point. Uh, mo moreover, it's important uh, our approach uh, in order to, to manage the risk and to manage uh, uh, our company we have to be sustainable and uh, we have to have a role in, the, in this new world in which we have sustainable. It is a, a, a winning for us and we think it is important. So we have to be, as for example, an insurer um, with a big attention for all, all the stakeholders, so for our employee, for all the client, for, for, for the, the investment, and so on. So again, safety first, and to be responsible, and to use, to, sorry, and to use innovation that provide to us a lot of opportunities. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, Daniele. Now, Walter, what about ISO standards, ISO? In, okay. in the future perspective. Yes, I'm uh, the convener of this working group of ISO, and they developed these standards in collaboration with the SEN, the European Standard Association, under the so-called Vienna Agreement. There are always two parallel votes, and we have developed over the last 12 years uh, five standards. They are listed on the top. It takes quite a lot of time. We have about uh, 20 members in this working group, 10 actives, uh, active members, and five of them are here, like uh, Andrew Ridley, Len DeVos, Werner Lienhardt, and Giorgio Pezzetti. And we are in the way of developing uh, or preparing two new standards that are in this uh, balloting circle, and then we have two that we have to continue and I think it's important to have these uh, standards. They give a uh, minimum precision and so on. And uh, we have ma I have made the personal experience that, for instance, the standard on Eclimeter helped me once with an argument with a specialist contractor. And also we had a uh, discussion with the Inclinometer because one manufacturer uh, he tried to misinterpret it, so we have made an uh, addendum, so it was more precise. But I think it's important to have these standards, and they can be redeveloped because they come up every five years on ISO for a uh, uh, procedure to check if they are still correct, and then the countries can uh, mention that they should be further developed. So, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot for the, your contribution. Andrew, what's, what, what is coming up? Okay, so um, 
as I mentioned in the first part, the um, principal aim of the TC220 is to raise the profile of field monitoring within the international uh, geotechnical community. Um, and to that aim, we have already requested uh, that we have a, a dedicated session at the European conference, a dedicated session on field monitoring. So that, that request has gone in and it's been very well received. So we hope that we'll have a, a, a session there where you can submit papers just on field monitoring. Um, we also have uh, a workshop at the, uh, um, the in seventh international conference on geotechnical and geophysical site characterization that will be in Barcelona in 2024. Um, and coming up in 2026 will be the next uh, international uh, symposium on field monitoring in geomechanics, which is in, to be held in, in India. Um, but I also mentioned that there are a few other things, and, and the two things that I'd like to draw your attention to in particular is we've requested of the International Society that we have a, an interactive technical talk on field monitoring. This is an initiative of the, uh, the new president, Mark Balus, um, and there are already about five or six of these on the International Society website. It's a little bit like the discussion we're having here. It's led by Mark as the president of the, institution, uh, the International Society, and Giorgio Pazzetti has agreed to uh, be the representative of TC220 on that. Uh, there'll be four, four people. Um, it's, the aim is Mark, Giorgio, and two young people will have a discussion about field monitoring, and that will be a live uh, video broadcast on the, on the International Society's website. And the other thing that I'd like to draw your attention to is that we are trying to generate um, uh, what's um, colloquially known as, a, a, oh. as a, a case histories journal. And if you go to the website, you'll find um, on, on the fieldmonitoring.org website, there is a, a page dedicated to uh, case histories. The only okay. challenge we set you is you have to put your case history onto one page, one A4 page. This was an idea of Ralph Peck and uh, Elmo de Baggio, that if you can't condense your results into one page, you don't fully understand it. So that's the challenge. Go there, the template is there for you to download, and then you can fill in your graphs and, and explain your, uh, your data. And I particularly like uh, Sebastiano's um, quote from John Berland about uh, we have to get the data to, uh, to, it talks to us, but we have to understand it. So there's your challenge. Go there, okay. put, your, put your information down, and explain it on one page. Okay, great, very nice, very, very good. Uh, action. So now please, Luca, quickly, we are Yes, I'll go very quickly. Uh, well, we have a fantastic opportunity now, that is the funds from the Next Generation Europe uh, programs, uh, PNRR. Let me mention just two uh, programs, uh, one funded by uh, the Ministry of the Environment and the other one, uh, the program with space activity for preservation. Uh, I don't, we have no time to go in detail on it, but just to say that through this program uh, we'll be, uh, we have the uh, opportunity, the challenging <laughs> opportunity to, to reinforce uh, the uh, monitoring uh, on, uh, on uh, unstable uh, landslides, for example, okay. and uh, uh, on the other side also to, to, to develop a ground motion service uh, that is very important uh, for, uh, for, for any assessment. Uh, let me highlight only that uh, for in the future, as a future perspective, uh, it will be important uh, to uh, uh, ensure the interaction with the final users. As I said before, uh, we as final user can say exactly what are the needs, uh, uh, and uh, we have done this uh, in the interaction with the Ministry of the Environment, uh, and we have done also this uh, 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 for example, uh, in the last years, uh, through the Copernicus uh, thematic table in, within the, the network of regional geological surveys to provide the user requirements for ground motion. So I'm optimistic because okay. uh, we think that we are going in the right direction. Always optimistic. Thanks a lot. Luigi, what about the future about, uh, for the agency? Uh, in, uh, in this moment, uh, we uh, are involved in a working group with the uh, University of Pisa and Sapienza and, uh, and uh, railway operators to in writing an, uh, a new guideline uh, focused on the management of railway bridge, bridge uh, starting from the guideline, road guidelines explained by my colleague Giuseppe. 
And um, in this new guideline, we, um, we uh, dedicate um, a, chapter, a specific chapter to, um, to, uh, to, monitor, uh, to monitoring. And um, in our vision is uh, that monitoring uh, must be seen as a process and um, with um, a, a specific phase of project. And this project is important to consider all the risks, all the risks um, linked at to, moni to monitoring system. Because okay. if, uh, if you uh, think at um, uh, what um, the risk of a prolonged stop of a train in a, in example, in a monitored tunnel for a full salary, and a passenger can be exposed to and, uh, at an uncontrolled evacuation yeah. and, uh, and uh, all the dangers uh, in, the, in the tunnel um, environment. And, um, and I noted uh, for, uh, for us it, also, it is also important to balance technologies and human, human factor. factor. Because it's a, it's a very, um, always, very important. Always very important, human factors and technologies. Thanks a lot. Giuseppe, please. Okay. Uh, in order to better direct the motorway and road manager, Transfisa is conducting several important activities that are still in progress. The main activities, which regard the safety and the monitoring of bridges and tunnels, are aimed to define, with the participation of all the stakeholders, the technical document that provide the skill required to perform the activities which can affect the infrastructure safety and to define the main characteristics that the monitoring system should have in order to be used effectively. Of course, uh, in all uh, the, uh, these uh, activities, uh, uh, the existing uh, standard, ISO, uh, UNI, etc., are also considered. Uh, However, it is fundamental for, uh, to be ready and flexible in order to utilize the incoming uh, technologies and methodologies in SAR, data-driven, uh, uh, deep learning, uh, etc. For the agency, it is important to focus attention uh, on the resilience of land transport infrastructures. That's why ANSFISA will have a technical session at the World Conference on Earthquake Engineering that will be held in Milan next year, titled Seismic Risk Management for Road and Railway Infrastructures. In conclusion, considering the number and the state of Italian road infrastructures, ANSFISA truly believes that it is necessary to quickly adopt and develop appropriate measures such as geotechnical and structural uh, monitoring systems. In this way, it will be possible to increase the possibility to mitigating risks, thereby increasing the safety and the resilience of the land transport network. Thank you. Thank you a lot. Thanks a lot, and thanks to all the panelists, uh, which have given us uh, a broad perspective about the state of the art and the future issue perspective about uh, policymakers and insurers. As Giorgio Pezzetti has got uh, many mentions, a lot of citation, I would say, like uh, uh, a researcher, many, many citations, so please, Giorgio, the stage is yours. So thanks a lot, thanks a lot, uh, and see you soon. Thank you again. Not at you. As yes, we were in perfect time, but so I was very, very happy about Giorgio to, be, to receive so many mentions. So there will be the break. Paolo, you are the boss. How long, how long will last the, the, the break? 15 minutes? No, as we are in time, we have half an hour. Uh, so 20, 25 minutes is better anyway.
intanto dico se le persone cominciassero a rientrare ecco il caffè hanno messo pure i cornetti sequenza si potrebbe mettere sì forse può aiutare per passare il potremmo il primo è Fornari che però non vedo quindi il primo posto Fornari il secondo il secondo Fabio che ti ho messo come Pen... no scusa no 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 non è no 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 sorry Fornari 1 Pagano 2 Tomatini 3 Cialanca 4 you are 5 you are the last one Uh, I think if you if you sit in the fourth in the fifth is better. Eh? Subito, è all'ultimo secondo. Ma di solito lo faccio, eh? non con me, poi ci non io. male mai. Tu ci ha ospitato ieri sera per la cena, quindi. <ride> Fabio, <ride> se ti metti nella seconda.
Torino e poi alla fine farò probabilmente un giro a Torino come va, potrei fare un giro di qualcuno o qualcosa del genere, ma sto più che simile in realtà, vedi? io metto in generale quello che fa e poi se devo andare, se l'ho un po' cambiato sul finto detto se il monitoraggio è, una, è un buon amico, un cattivo amico, poi insomma poi dipende come fare insomma. la togliamo uno. Vabbè. perfetto no no va bene così va bene così va bene <ride> allora scalate a questo punto <ride> così se sono stanco mi metto qui a seduto io facciamo così ok please take your seat next time no coffee So I think there is uh, a high level of uh, missing people, but anyway, we have to start. Otherwise, we are getting late because we're very, very good, my uh, previous convenors, because they were able to manage uh, in right time. So please help me to, to be good as the, my colleagues. I would like to start um, with a very quick introduction uh, and reminding you that a um, couple of things. First of all, there is a QR code at the entrance. In the QR code, you can find all the program with all the extended CV of all the panelists. So if you don't know about this, if you did not have the chance uh, to scan it, there is a QR code again at the entrance where you can scan and see in detail the CV. Uh, here, uh, I'm not going to enter into uh, much detail, but just uh, uh, want to say that I'm very happy, again, to be here. Uh, it is the busiest uh, panels with eight persons that uh, I really thank you so much for, for joining us. And I think uh, it is a good panel because um, there are different uh, backgrounds and also different roles, uh, spanning from asset managers, uh, from advisors of asset managers, from technological companies. Uh, there are also contractors, construction companies, and so on. So I think we are covering uh, all the frame and we can have different uh, perspectives on what is the role of monitoring uh, for asset management purposes and for construction phases. So uh, I would like to start uh, with the first round. You have already the mic, that's good. Um, starting from uh, um, engineer Francesco Fornasari uh, of Enel. Enel is the, um, one of the most important um, companies that is managing hydropower asset and energy uh, in general. Over the last year, he made a strong transition toward green and now it's Enel Green Power. Uh, so that's, uh, and it's working not only in Italy, but um, uh, worldwide in a lot of uh, areas. And he's the responsible for uh, dams and, and civil structures. And I would like to start with Engineer Fornari just for one reason, because uh, especially in Italy, uh, probably you know, but uh, anytime uh, the, the evolution of philosophies and cultural and technical things, 
became from um, major disasters. And so in Italy, we experienced uh, a major disasters in 1963 uh, regarding dams. There was the failure, not of a dam, but of a landslide that entered into a huge basin, causing uh, severe uh, casualties. And after that, uh, all the large dams in Italy were uh, affected by uh, strong monitoring actions. And so I think, in my feeling, in my experience, the world of dams and hydropower energy is probably one of those where monitoring for asset management purposes is probably more, more important. So what I would like to ask um, to Engineer Fornari is what is his opinion about the present status of the monitoring of dams for asset management purposes and what you see in terms of perspectives. You know that I can give you three, four, and exceed five minutes, and then if we have time, we can go for a second round. Okay, good morning to all. Uh, uh, Enel uh, has uh, a patrimony of uh, um, industrial uh, plants uh, in Italy, very uh, important. If you can see uh, at the slide, we uh, operate uh, in uh, more than 500 uh, hydropower plants. We operate uh, uh, about uh, 188 uh, large dams and more and more uh, little dams, channels, tunnels, penstock, and bridges. So, uh, and we those um, industrial components uh, we produce uh, about the 50% um, of uh, hydropower plant uh, in uh, our uh, the production in Italy, renewable energy. But renewable energy uh, made by our uh, grandfathers because uh, the, the average age of our uh, um, buildings are is uh, 70 years, 70 years. Uh, so uh, the, the field of dance has in his DNA uh, the, um, the team of monitoring. And we uh, um, have uh, in our dams about 50,000 50, points of uh, monitoring. And many of those are um, started with the building, with the, 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 the birth of our dance. So, uh, in our uh, company, we, had, we have uh, uh, a very uh, huge of uh, knowledge on this time. <laughs> but uh, uh, we are open uh, with uh, uh, the innovation, no? innovation of monitoring and innovation of uh, uh, instrument. So in the second uh, next slide, slide, the next slide, uh, we can see uh, the, the, the teams uh, that uh, we are facing. Uh, we are facing on uh, risk assessment that uh, I've, I've seen, uh, uh, say, uh, gener uh, our colleague of uh, um, insurance. Uh, risk assessment is uh, important for a big company like uh, us. And uh, we, are, we face uh, with uh, long-term uh, phenomena and uh, with uh, a very short phenomena like uh, landslide, floods, uh, and earthquakes. All those phenomena are important for our risk assessment, and so we have uh, uh, um, we look for uh, uh, any improvement of uh, instrumentation. Thank you very much. And uh, this is very important. Uh, and of course, innovation is important, but as I said before, uh, instruments, if you have not a real purpose and risk uh, management is a very important purpose, as I lighted before, uh, as potentially no meaning. So um, I would like to uh, switch now um, to Dr. Uh, Fabio Pagano, because we have said that uh, dams uh, are quite old uh, and they can be considered a cultural heritage or not. Maybe some of them are wonderful cultural heritages. But as you can imagine, in Italy, we have other cultural heritages. Yesterday, we had the chance to make a field trip in the Colosseum. Uh, that is probably the most iconic and famous uh, cultural heritage in Italy. But we have so many uh, parks and areas. And one of these parks uh, is uh, an interesting one because 
I, I think uh, is experiencing all the type of geological hazards that uh, exist. Uh, I'm not able to find one that is not present in Camp for Gray area. <laughs> and we have this, uh, uh, I think, lucky director <laughs> that is managing all this uh, uh, important um, cultural heritage in, in, uh, in Campania area uh, that is inside one of the most uh, powerful volcanoes. Uh, in the world as well, that is not the Vesuvius, but the Campi Fregrei, that is near, anyway, also the Vesuvius can be, can be an issue for this area. So, um, on the other hand, uh, I think, uh, in my idea, that probably dams started several years ago to implement plans, while on the other side, cultural heritage is something that is just rise over the last few years as a focus for monitoring for asset management purposes. And so, um, Dr. Fabio Pagano, um, what do you think uh, would be, what is the present status in your experience, and uh, what do you think should be the future of monitoring for uh, asset management of cultural heritage parks? Thank you, thank you. Uh, good morning of all, uh, to all. Uh, thank you, La Sapienza. Thank you, Paolo, for the invitation. Probably we are the hidden dream uh, for monitoring <laughs> Or natural hazard because we um, we are the archaeological park of Campi Flegrei. Uh, what we are, we are independent institute of Ministry of Culture. But uh, most more important is now for today perspective is where we are. Uh, the Campi Flegrei is the name of a large Burgano situated in the western part of Naples. Uh, probably you know that the name. Can you Flegrei, put the microphone closer? Okay, sorry come from an ancient Greek uh, uh, word, uh, Greek uh, verb, flego, that means in Italian, barn, to barn. So the name of our park is uh, Park of Burning Fields. It seems uh, a Brit pop song, but uh, the reality is very different. The area is uh, the caldera include 24 uh, craters and volcanic edifice. Uh, most of them lie on the water. As you know, it's one of the most large volcanoes in the world. The geological dimension of this land landscape, it is really important for us. And the form of the ancient human settlement are the most solid connection for the different sites of our park. 26 sites separated in the north of Naples. Between them, Kuma, the oldest Greek colony in the western Mediterranean. Uh, then we can uh, say something, tell something about Pozzuoli, the most important airport in the western Mediterranean. And also, Bayan uh, is thermalism between, at the beginning of the imperial period uh, until the Middle Ages. The Flagrian land unifies all the different contexts, is perpetually burning and moving, <coughs> even today continuously modify the panorama of the entire Gulf of Naples. Among the 26 sites, uh, Flavian Amphitheater of Pozzuoli, Archaeological Park of Baia, the Archaeological Park of Cuma, the uh, Archaeological Museum of Campi Flegrei in the Castle of Baia, the Underwater Park of Baia, Piscina Mirabilis, and so-called Temple of Serapid of Pozzuoli are open to the public. The Flegrean type of volcanism, probably you know, manifests itself into bradyism. Literally, it's a slow rate that cyclically raises and lowers the level of the sea, or rather, that of the land. In our archaeological park, there is probably the highest concentration of archaeological structures with a high degree of conservation insert in one of the most critical and potential dangerous natural environments. The management of such complexity requires higher attention. The question is, uh, the park has achieved uh, several projects conservation to improve the enhancement of the site. How to guide the development vision of one of the most cultural attractions in Italy with the attention due to the planning of on its conservation and safety use? The combination of the importance of the structures preserved even in different environments, and the presence of constant stresses of geological nature need to join our activities in, celeb in several collaboration capable 
to bring the park towards managing the situation. That's our work. Therefore, the park has chosen to build the widest network collaboration with several research institutes to put itself in the right condition to face the challenges away that await us. So we can say something about the collaboration with the, the University of Naples Federico II, a team of uh, architects, geologists, engineers that work with us uh, to monitoring the archaeological park of Kuma. Uh, we have many problems of uh, landslide hazard, so we have a, a special tool of monitoring we're working with, uh, with the team of Federico II to create a management system for the uh, safety use of our side and for the programming of conservation uh, projects. Or the, um, also the project with ISPRA. Uh, we work with ISPRA, uh, also a team of geologists uh, and engineers, in archaeological park of Terme di Baia, but we also other project with CNRR uh, in uh, underwater archaeological uh, park of Baia, a different environment, a typical environment. And we start also a new approach for us uh, uh, about a citizen science project uh, in archae underwater archaeological park of Baia to create a new approach because we uh, think that uh, the beauty of the historical memory is uh, everyone's right, but also everyone's duty. So we have to create a collaboration, a cooperation also with the citizen, our visitors to create the condition to uh, monitoring the situation of our park. Thank you very much. It, it, it was right an interesting point that the, the underwater world uh, that is becoming more and more used for, for different reasons. So uh, definitely something that uh, we will see probably more in the future also in terms of technological evolution. Uh, and we will have also uh, in the next days a masterclass dedicated to the offshore uh, wind turbines and so on with a lot of tools for underwater modeling. So thank you very much. Uh, I would like now to, to pass to uh, um, Dr. Um, Massimo Comedini from uh, Italfer, that is the um, design company, engineering company of the National um, Railway um, Group in Italy. And, and moving uh, to, to the uh, railway system, uh, we are ranging from more local uh, assets, so a dam uh, or a park, to something that is spread over an entire country, potentially over the entire world, so a linear infrastructure. So in, in this perspective, uh, what is uh, also in your opinion uh, the present status and what you see for the future uh, of uh, more geotechnical and structural monitoring? Good morning, good morning to everybody. Uh, in Italy, Italfair uh, designs, operates uh, mainly designing uh, new infrastructure for Rete Ferroviaria Italiana, which is the, the body who manages the almost uh, all the railway lines in Italy. And uh, in this area, we have gained a significant uh, experience uh, in geotechnical and uh, uh, hydrogeological monitoring. However, in the last years, we have been involved, uh, increasingly involved by uh, RFI in uh, designing uh, defense works for existing uh, railway lines. And in this context, uh, a, the uh, monitoring system systems are often necessary, both for uh, monitoring the development of uh, instability process and checking the integrity of defense work, works after construction. And for this purpose, we use uh, a variety of monitoring systems. And uh, often these are connected to uh, control centers, uh, which allows um, a real-time monitoring uh, and uh, blocking of traffic in case of danger. For, uh, 
for this purpose, we, we use uh, many different kinds of monitoring systems, uh, uh, which, which uh, often are automatic systems. And uh, like uh, uh, robotic inclinometers, uh, uh, robotic uh, total stations, and so on. And in, uh, uh, we are interested in uh, integrating different kind of monitoring systems. This is important for us uh, uh, for two reasons. Uh, first of all, for acquire a complete and redundant uh, set of information about development uh, of uh, a stability process and checking the integrity and uh, um, for uh, uh, managing multi-risk uh, uh, situations, we can find often on a critical point along the railway lines. And uh, another topic in which we see uh, interesting uh, future development uh, is that uh, of uh, controlling instabilities processes and uh, uh, checking the integrity of the fence works uh, uh, using a, a system based on the artificial intelligence uh, algorithms capable of processing 2D and 3D images. This is interesting for us because uh, we have uh, we often have uh, many critical points along a line and uh, checking of this situation can be uh, very expensive. Uh, this kind of system could be operated by drones uh, or uh, directly, directly from uh, the train. And this could be very inter interesting for us for uh, lower the operating costs of these systems. Yeah, no, thank you very much. It's a very nice point. I, I like pictures anytime, so if one want to take a picture uh, of today, but uh, I think really there is a power in the picture, o all of this in, uh, in our hands, and there is a potential for taking more and more photos or stuff like this. And, and I think it's also interesting to see the uh, perspective. Uh, when you looked at something that is quite distributed, uh, you have to look at something that allowed you to reduce uh, the cost because you cannot put the same effort over thousands. How many thousands kilometers uh, of railways, more or less, are in Italy? Mm. I don't know exactly, but we were speaking of 100,000. 100,000 kilometers. So definitely, we cannot install an inclinometer every 10 meters or something like this. So it's not feasible. Okay, um, moving from railways to uh, roads, uh, we have here um, Engineer Shalanka from um, ANAS, that is the National Road uh, uh, Department of Italy, um, the National Road Company. And uh, I think now it's interesting to dip into the ground because he's working in the tunnel uh, office. And I would like to know what is uh, the present status again uh, of uh, monitoring in the tunnel for asset maintenance. Tunnels is one of those assets that during construction are very well attentioned, but sometimes when they are built, uh, we tend to forget. I think it's no more this way now and what you see even more in the future. Good morning, everybody. I would like to start to um, introducing the guideline uh, for the existing tunnels. <laughs> Uh, in April 2022, the Italian Ministry of Transportation has published the um, guideline for the risk analysis, safety analysis, uh, inspection, and monitoring of existing tunnel, which is applicable to the road existing tunnel. And this for us, this event for us, is an important input that uh, will guide us through the transition from the extraordinary maintenance approach to a predictive maintenance approach of our uh, infrastructure. And of course, to, to do it, we need to know very well our asset, our tunnel. We need to implement continuous inspection and uh, monitoring system. Today, we have some tenders ongoing uh, in order to, um, to identify um, external suppliers, specialistic suppliers with uh, specific skills that they will support us in the um, application of the guideline. 
Uh, we will start with application of the first two phases, which refer to the inventory and the um, initial inspection. Once completed the phases, we will have the general overview, the background uh, of, um, of our tunnel, of our assets, and we'll be, we will be ready to, to implement uh, monitoring system and inspection system. Um, we are um, asset managers, so we care about the safety of the of the users. And uh, if we think, for example, uh, about the tunnel, um, we we have had recently some exchange of idea with um, external supplier to develop a monitoring system. Uh, for example, it will be important to take under control the um, status of the concrete lining of the of the tunnel. And we decided to, de to develop a system that uh, with the use of, for example, of camera, uh, smartphone, or tablet, taking pictures during the time, overlap them, and track the um, deterioration of the materials of the concrete. And it will be also important to monitor the, um, the slope or the landslide uh, in correspondence of the, um, of the tunnel. And to do it, we will... Uh, implement system that we have already tested during the um, design phases or construction phases and extend them to the during the, or the operational phases, like for example, the use of the interferometry combined with the sensors, the traditional sensor. Of course, to, to manage all this data, to collect and manage all this data, we will need a system, uh, uh, software, and ANAS is developing a system which is called RAM. Uh, road asset management, uh, which is under development, and it will include different modules for bridge, uh, uh, tunnels, road department, uh, etc. Good, thank you. Now it's it's nice to to our uh, was already mentioned before about predictive maintenance co concept. I think that predictive maintenance maintenance is what is uh, has the potential as a concept to move uh, and to um, exponentially making growth uh, um, the monitoring war. Because when we deal about safety, safety is a concept that can have a level of threshold of acceptance. So it can be very different, uh, anyone can set at a different level, sometimes can be even very low. Uh, and so it's, it's difficult, for, from my opinion, uh, to see the development of this practice only for safety. I know that I'm saying something strong, but what I'm saying now is that if, if uh, monitoring is used for predictive maintenance, so for something that is used, it can make saving money and not only lives. Uh, definitely this is for asset manager and for owner become a much more effective uh, solution. So I think this is the right way to go. And this is something that we are not airing recently. And I'm very happy to hear that uh, now it's uh, more or less one year that there are some guidelines. So there is a process guideline uh, we have seen before, ISO standards and so on. We are, I think, in, in the right line. And I would like to, to move now um, to, I think uh, Lynn DeVos uh, can add also some different type uh, of assets uh, uh, with respect to the others that has been already mentioned. Uh, she's also part uh, of the mm, group uh, working on the standards, uh, as mentioned before. She's working at the Department of Mobility and Public Work um, of Flanders. And uh, what is the value of monitoring for an advisor? Because sh uh, she's working in a, in a public office, but uh, you can probably explain better. Is an advisor for, uh, for the government. And so is working, suggesting someone and convincing someone of the importance of good practice. So what is the importance of monitoring for this? And uh, are there some present criticalities? And uh, have you do you envision something to solve this? Okay, thank you. Um, so I think from, from my point of view, so the advisor part uh, for the asset managers, I think there's a few things that we, ho we already have quite well under control considering monitoring. I think uh, one of those is the real-time local monitoring during construction works to increase the safety or reduce the risk during construction. I think this is something that has developed over the recent years into something that I would call standard now and that's being applied uh, more systematically and also successfully in Belgium. So people, asset managers, really see the added value of, of monitoring there. So there is not a lot of convincing necessary anymore. 
Um, one of the things um, I think that is the largest added value for asset managers in Belgium today is something that has already been touched a few times today, and that's that um, they look at monitoring as a way to assess the safety of their structures. And uh, they do that in, in for two reasons. I think, first of all, let's say also in Belgium, we have a lot of assets being built in the year 60s, 70s. They're reaching now a period where they need a lot of maintenance or need to be replaced. And asset managers are thinking of monitoring as a way to prioritize uh, where to work first. And, and secondly, if they have structures which are at risk and which they know they cannot replace immediately, they are looking at monitoring as a way to, to have a risk assessment of, of their structure. And for prioritizing, I think there is a quite few techniques which have been recently developed like INSAR techniques, uh, drones, which can be used to look at a, a broader scale and give you an idea of, of what's happening on a broad scale and, and zoom in on, on the assets that, that really need uh, to be looked at. I think it's, they are getting the idea that it can be very useful for them to, to look at, at it this way. If we look at risk assessment and structural health monitoring, um, I think both the accidents that have happened, not in Belgium, but abroad, and, and then the things that we see in Belgium, periods of high drive, a drought, and, and then heavy rainfall. Uh, also two years ago, we had a lot of damage in the southern part of Belgium due to very heavy rainfall. It makes asset managers realize that there is a risk that something will happen to their assets, and they are looking for, for a way to, to assess this. And, um, Many research projects have been started up and, and are being started up. And as said before, there is money for this at the moment because there is this awareness that there is this risk. But I think that it's also a reason why there is a risk in there because a lot of instruments are being placed, a lot of data is being produced, and this data is not so easily interpretable. So I think researchers they really need to do an effort there to, to help the asset manager to understand the data. And I think there is work for both the asset managers and the researchers. For the asset managers, I think it's really valuable that they understand there is not a very quick answer to, to their question, is this a safe structure? They install monitoring and they immediately expect to know okay, is it safe now? And then I'm saying, we're only measuring for one month. We need to understand how the structure is behaving and, and what's happening. And apart from that, we also don't really know what to expect when you have impending failure. So I think the role for the asset manager is there. Um, they have a lot of structures that need to be demolished, put in some money to investigate, what types of failure and how can you recognize in monitoring these types of failure if they need to be torn down anyway put in some extra money there to realize to add to the hundreds or thousands of examples that we need for artificial intelligence so i think there's a big role for them i'm trying to convince them uh, that it's also important to monitor at that time and then I think for the manufacturers and the researchers, it's very important to know that um, it's not about, as you said before, putting in a lot of instruments and creating a lot of data. The asset managers really need to need help for interpretation of this data, and that's, that's their role. And they just want a really easy answer <laughs> to the question, is this structure safe or not? They don't want hundreds of data points or millions or to really, they don't even want to understand what's behind it. They just want to make sure that they have a safe feeling over their assets. But I think it, ha it has to come from both sides um, in the future. And otherwise there might be a risk that they would give up on monitoring, which would be a real shame, I think, because there is definitely a lot of added value. Yeah, thank you, Lynn. Uh, I'm really conscious of this. Uh, easy answers to very complex problems uh, is our challenge, definitely. And, and data, someone was saying that they are just a link uh, or, or a food for a human brain. 
Uh, and I think this is still the base. Of course, we can trust a little bit for the future, not just on the human brain, but uh, to an artificial brain. Uh, but I think uh, we have still to, to feel hard on the relevance uh, of uh, our brain. But the, the, the interpretation is definitely a key point. And so thank you for stressing this, this factor, not just put the instrument, not just collect data, but uh, try to understand what they mean to give simple answers. And so regarding this point, um, we were uh, on the, the opi he had the opinion of an advisor of asset manager. And now um, we have Marcia Valavisi, who is an engineer uh, from Movian, a company from the National Highway Company, ASPI, in Italy. And uh, your, your role is a little bit different because you are a technological company inside an asset manager company. So you have to convince uh, about the importance of technologies and which kind of technologies can uh, provide uh, support and to develop as well. So uh, what do you think uh, uh, is, uh, is the perspective in the future? I would like to, to, to have your opinion more on the future perspective, but also on the status. Okay. So good morning to everybody. Um, so uh, I want to underline a topic uh, which is for me one of the main challenge in structural monitoring uh, right now, uh, especially for existing structure, which is what we can call a more general monitoring approach. Uh, so all we know that structural monitoring in recent years uh, have given more and more attention for uh, uh, check the behavior of a structure over time and to assess uh, the state, the health state of a structure over time. But uh, uh, right now, until now, um, monitoring systems have um, mostly been applied and designed to specific case study. So have been specifically designed for that structure. Um, and um, in this case, uh, uh, you need to know very well the structure, the problem that um, this structure can have to, to install a monitoring system that uh, is designed for the structure. But this approach, of course, is not uh, so... Um, it's not so general. I mean, we can, cannot monitor uh, a large number of structures in this way. So in recent years, especially in this last year, thanks also to all the um, European and also national investments, uh, we have the possibility, we, we have money to, to monitor a large number of structures. So we need to switch from this specific approach to a more general, to a more widespread approach, monitoring approach. So the question is, how do we can uh, switch from this specific approach to a more general approach? So this is uh, the question that we as Movion and Autostrade per l'Italia are trying to answer because it's not so easy because it's in each structure is different from the other so need to be um, studied. Uh, so the first thing, the first uh, point uh, I think could be uh, try to identify clusters of structures uh, which means structures that can be considered similar for uh, the static scheme, for the material, the environmental condition, um, for all the geometric characteristics. So in this way, we can assume that all, these, uh, uh, all the structures uh, in a single cluster um, would have the same behavior. So in this way, we can then study uh, some representative case study inside each cluster uh, to identify which kind of problems, which kind of defects, which kind of behavior we can monitor, and then design uh, monitoring systems to catch uh, and to um, understand these kind of behaviors. In this way, the main goal is to have then um, all the data coming from the monitoring system uh, collected and then analyzed uh, together with all the data of similar structures in order to have a more easily interpretation uh, just call, in, in general for uh, understand a behavior of a structures if we have a large number of, of similar structures that behave in the same way maybe it's more easy to identify one structures that behave in different way. And so we can prioritize uh, 
more uh, efficiently all the maintenance, all the assessment, maintenance, and then intervention of our assets. So I think that this could be um, a very, uh, I mean, in the future, uh, could be the role of the monitoring. So just to, um, to have more information, more information which means uh, less uncertainty, so reduce uncertainties, uh, and then have an optimized uh, maintenance activity and also, of course, uh, uh, all the activity that we have to perform of our structure. Thank you very much, Marcia. I think there are three, three main words that uh, I like very much. One is generalization. So try to make it more general and not site-specific any time because this is uh, preventing for making large things. Um, the other point is reducing the uncertainty uh, that uh, definitely is one of the key factors of monitoring. And the last one probably is a new word is prioritization. So prioritization when you have a large assets is definitely important because we know there is always constraint of budget. We will almost never have all the budget that we want, and so uh, we have to start from what is more relevant. And so prioritization is definitely something that is a base for predictive maintenance. So uh, as money is important uh, and assets are important, uh, someone has to build it, I think. Uh, and here we have also someone uh, that uh, is uh, working uh, as a president of a company uh, that is building a lot of infrastructures in Italy and worldwide. Um, we have Marco Rettighieri, he's both geologists and engineers, but at present is here at him as a uh, general manager of uh, uh, the largest Italian company uh, we built. Um, so, uh, Marco, I would like to make to you a little bit different questions than the others. I know you, are, you have a technical background, uh, but now you have a role uh, of managing a big uh, company. And so, uh, in this present role, uh, how many times per day, per month, per week, I don't know, monitoring is on your table? It's something you have to, to look at to consider it. Is more a problem or more an opportunity? It's a difficult question, I know, but try to give an answer. When I started to work around the world, I spent uh, a week to reach Rome to inform my colleague uh, what happened in, on site. Now is uh, on my, on my cellular phone, I have the possibility to check all our work around the world. If I need, in real time, I check it, what's happening in Australia, for example. It's better or, or no? I don't know. I have no answer uh, about this question. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, uh, more or less, uh, uh, we spent uh, a lot of time in front of our computer to uh, check all our work around the world. Uh, because we create, we already create, uh, from uh, two, three years ago, a, a, a particular platform uh, with uh, uh, with the artificial intelligence that check all our work. But before we are able to check, we must create a model. Without a model, uh, for this reason, we need a designer. For, uh, all the time we spent to compare uh, spend our time to compare between our model built before and what's happened in the meantime. Without a model, a right model, we cannot use in artificial intelligence. Uh, many times I listen, uh, many people, designer and not a design, to talk about uh, artificial intelligence. But uh, without uh, the human effort to fix uh, a right model before the construction, I cannot use uh, the artificial intelligence. Geologist, engineer, architect, and so on, must contribute to define a right model. In this case, uh, for example, 
we discover that our model uh, of tunnel between Milan and Genoa was wrong because the model adopted before the construction was wrong. Artificial intelligence put a warning of some uh, over, uh, over measure of, of some detail, but is the human effort that can change and check correctly the construction. For this reason, we spent a, an average of 3-5% of total amount of work in artificial intelligence and in monitoring. In, uh, uh, in the third uh, valico between Milan and Genova, uh, the value is uh, uh, more than 4 uh, billion euros. That means million of euro invested in monitoring. That is necessary to predict and to study the situation. Okay. Yeah. No, of course, you, you answered uh, very well, and and so thank you. No, very nice because you, you raised a point that I think is under uh, discussion from anyone in the world right now. Artificial intelligence will substitute us or <laughs> will support us. Uh, the feeling is that uh, has to be something that will support us in doing more creative and complex things than the systematic and automatic one. But on the other hand, can help more generalization, for example, as was mentioned before. So, and w from what I learned, three, four percent of a budget is not so low, so definitely need something that you care about also in an in a, uh, economic <laughs> analysis. Okay, thank you very much, Marco, uh, for being here, for your answer. And finally, uh, this first round, I don't know if there'd be a second one, but you are advised about this. Um, we have uh, engineer Eliano uh, Romani, that is construction manager of the Metro C uh, line in Rome, the line that uh, is crossing below the Colosseum that uh, some of you had the chance to see yesterday. And so I think, Eliano, over the last years, you had a lot of uh, interactions with monitoring, uh, probably uh, as much as with modeling. Um, and so uh, has become a good friend or a bad friend for you? Thank you, Paolo. Um, uh, to answer uh, to your question, uh, I would like to describe uh, my short uh, experience uh, in uh, uh, monitoring system and my own point Not of so short, probably. Well, <laughs> short, about uh, only 10 years. Uh, and uh, my point of view about uh, the monitoring system as a designer and uh, engineering manager. Uh, Metro C uh, is uh, the, a general contractor um, charged with the design and the construction of uh, Line C of Rome Underground. And uh, Line C uh, is, uh, um, uh, the, is the third uh, metro line in Rome, about uh, 26 kilometers and, uh, about, uh, and uh, 29 stations. It will cross the city from uh, northwest to southeast uh, and uh, in the central stretch uh, under construction, uh, station and uh, tunnels construction interacted with uh, the most uh, important monument of the uh, historic center of Rome. Uh, we speak about uh, the Colosseo, Basilica di Massenzio, El Foro Romano. And uh, in this uh, complex uh, context, uh, the, the monitoring system uh, was uh, uh, a key aspect of the, um, the design phases. Uh, in fact, uh, I think that uh, a specific monitoring design uh, must be de developed to guarantee the safeguard of all structure present uh, um, um, above the, uh, the, the, the flow, the, uh, um, above the, the stretch starting from the design phases uh, until to the long-term phenomena by way with the, co the construction phases. Uh, 
And uh, when uh, I speak about uh, um, specific monitoring uh, design, I'm referring to the, in the development of uh, four steps uh, in the design phases. The first one is uh, the, the definition of the purpose of the monitoring system. Uh, the second is uh, the uh, identification of the, the most uh, important uh, uh, quantities that uh, to be monitored the, during the construction phase, and then uh, the choice uh, of the most appropriate instrumentation and their position. And uh, the last, uh, but I think is uh, uh, the most important, is uh, the definition of uh, the monitoring attention and alarm value based on the design predictions. So, uh, uh, in, in Metro C, uh, we uh, in design, uh, developed, uh, and installed uh, in a specific monitoring system uh, on each monument that interacted with the construction of tunnels and stations in order to, uh, to check the design prediction, to validate the models implemented in the design phases, to calibrate the physical and the uh, mechanical parameters, and to uh, implement the observation method if uh, and when it is necessary. In, uh, in, um, in Line C project, uh, uh, the, the monitoring system consists of uh, three macro elements, uh, geotechnical monitoring, geomatic monitoring, and structural monitoring. Uh, we uh, started in 2006, and uh, uh, in these years, uh, we installed uh, about three uh, 30,000 instrumentation, and only 10,000 instrumentation uh, was installed uh, along the T3 stretch, the stretch under construction. <coughs> Another um, important aspect of uh, uh, the, the monitoring uh, system in, uh, in an urban area as uh, uh, the, the, the historic center of Rome is uh, the schedule of the installation of the instrumentation because uh, uh, it's uh, mm, very important that the, uh, the installation of the instrumentation uh, will be one year before the construction phases in order to acquire the necessary reference with the environmental um, uh, variation and to keep under control the damage already present on the, on the structure. So, uh, to answer to your, your question, I think that in my role of uh, design and engineering manager, the monitoring system is uh, my best friend. <laughs> okay. Good. Thank you very much. <coughs> so, I would like to make a uh, clap some hands for, for all their questions. <laughs> and then something that was not prepared. I have to do something out of the scene, out of the program, and just asking you a simple question that you have to answer only for those that uh, jumped something in their minds. With three words, what are the main missing points that potentially for the next uh, round tables made by companies that build technologies, uh, what are the three missing points we have today in monitoring so that to understand if they can do something? Francesco, something in mind? Someone? Yeah, go Marcia. Yes, I think that one point, one missing point uh, is the monitoring of the monitoring system. I mean, we are installing a lot of sensors, a lot of instrumentation right now to gather uh, information about our structure. But all these systems uh, have to be um, managed in time and also monitoring itself. So I think that maybe this point also um, the regulation, maybe this is a missing point that uh, all we uh, have to uh, care about because uh, of course uh, in uh, mm, some years uh, we will have a lot of instrumentation installed on, on our structure that uh, need to be uh, managed, may, may need to be assessed <laughs> itself, so maybe we have to think about uh, uh, efficient ways uh, 
to check the functionality of our systems over time. Thank you, interesting point. Monitoring of monitoring system, <laughs> that's good. Thank you. Any other? But, uh, sometimes the data came from uh, monitoring remain in... Uh, under the desk. <laughs> under the desk uh, or in the basket, or in the basket sometimes because uh, uh, is missing the person that <laughs> can uh, understand the data came from, uh, from monitoring. Uh, as you know very well, uh, the old bridge in Genoa is uh, disrupted between, uh, due to the fact of missing in monitoring or worst because the people designed to check the monitoring is put in the basket probably the data came from monitoring the new bridge in Genoa as Mr. Comedini know very well because the designer uh, was uh, Italfer put a robot that pass uh, every day to check the integrity of the structure and spend more or less 15 hours to produce a radiography of all the uh, iron put in operation. But all this data must be checked by uh, artificial intelligence <coughs> but at the end uh, there is a man that with the model in front of us uh, must uh, must speak with other and say this value is not correct it's not enough the artificial intelligence till now Maybe in the future, uh, men will be placed, replaced by a machinery, but now, no. Uh, thank you, Mark, v very nice. Um, I think one point that we can rise just to conclude, and thank you all for, for your contribution, uh, is that um, probably we are in a university, in a large university. Uh, one of the things that are appearing today, uh, probably you have not enough people, uh, and because behind a lot of instruments there is someone that is installing, there is someone that has to interpret, there is someone that has to take decisions. And so the training that we have uh, about this, uh, the number of people that are trained today on this are probably not enough. So what do you think, uh, Vice Rector? I think it's a good message <laughs> to launch uh, at our university and all the other university to uh, stress this point. So thank you very much. Uh, and again, clap your hands. And I think Giorgio, we have to thank you, Eliano, that mentioned the observational method, probably for one of the first time today. So up to you. Well, we reached the last uh, round table. I invited the speaker to take their place here on the stage. And while, while they are taking their place, uh, let me just remind that uh, I've been very happy to listen this morning sometime to, be, to mention the human factor. This is something I believe is uh, one of the most important points in our activity. Human factor is, uh, let me say, the basis of uh, what we are doing. As uh, Marco Etigheri said, probably in the future uh, if artificial intelligence will replace uh, men. I hope not. But, but till now we need human, human factor to drive our activity. By the way, by the way we are late. We know that angry people can be very dangerous. So let's start immediately without uh, any other in interruption.
So we start with this uh, last uh, round table uh, dedicated to the role of manufacturer and service providers. We have uh, here representative of different uh, companies, manufacturer, manufacturing companies and the service companies. And I will ask them to answer two very simple but at the same time very complicated questions. The first question is introduced by, if they change the, the slide, the next slide please, by this sentence from Professor Anna, which I hope will trigger the, the reaction of our panelists. Uh, it is a very, a very pessimistic uh, sentence from Professor Anna that in 1985, that means 40 years ago, said that uh, about 15 years ago, that means more than 50 years ago, uh, monitoring and instrumentation were good because where part was made. After that, I don't read the second part because someone can be uh, upset by that, but the point is, what are we now? So the first question I want to ask uh, our panelists is, uh, first of all, do you think that this sentence is still true? Is this valid or no? And uh, moreover, is the instrumentation and monitoring market nowadays something that has overcome this problem or not? What is your opinion? And I will ask uh, to start uh, this discussion to, from Jürgen Fleiss, he's here. Jürgen Fleiss is the managing director of the Spanish engineering firm Ofiteco and former vice chairman of the technical committee on, their, on them surveillance of ICOL. So Jürgen, which is your opinion about this? Thank you, uh, Giorgio, for this invitation. Uh, good morning to everybody. It's a pleasure to be here in this impressive and historic venue. Uh, as you said, I'm representing Ofiteco. We are an engineering and monitoring company based in Spain and started 50 years ago in providing monitoring solutions at that time, we were, had both roles. We were manufacturers and also service providers because in the early 70s, it was not easy in Spain to buy instruments and the price was high, so we had to decide to manufacture our own equipment. Over time, we focused on the service uh, of installation, of um, design, and mainly of, of data assessment and abandoned the line of the manufacturing. Sometimes I am asking myself if we did well, because uh, we started with a very small toolbox of few instruments about 50 years ago, and now, uh, as we already have learned today, and we will see these days, there's uh, mm, so many uh, new varieties of, of solutions uh, to monitor in a distributed way, uh, on a remote way, so now we have so many tools Sometimes I'm a bit jealous of the manufacturers. I think you made a very good job. And probably as service providers, and that links with your initial questions and with this quote, probably we were not able to transmit to our clients the, the need and the importance of uh, professional services related with uh, monitoring. Because you might, might have the best instrument, but if it's placed in the wrong location, the data you get won't be useful. If the instruments are not installed professionally, you might get uh, mm, doubtful data. And if you're not able to analyze, and we heard this in different uh, speeches this morning, to analyze the data in a diligent way, uh, you won't be able to transform uh, the data into useful information. So um, I think there's quite a gap where we have to transmit the importance of these services. Uh, as an example, most of the big infrastructure projects have quite a, a poor monitoring design. Very often it's not project specific and has to be adapted. So I also would like to make a, a call as we hear in the university, and I was happy to hear from, from uh, Professor Linat in Graz, you're always already teaching monitoring. I think this is important to create this monitoring culture. So even if we have great technology, I think we have to to get on a step and to, to have this 
monitoring culture that also values the need for a professional design. Thank you, Julian. Uh, let me underline your last uh, word, uh, what you said, the culture of monitoring. I think that this is a key point. We have to develop the culture of monitoring, not just, uh, sorry for your instrument or services, but a general culture about monitoring. Uh, next uh, speaker will be Daniele Inaudi. Daniele is the co-founder of a Swiss company Smartec and is uh, the general manager of Rocktech. So, Daniele, which is your opinion about uh, that sentence? Grazie, Giorgio. Uh, yeah, I think it's an interesting uh, sentence and probably true. But I guess that's uh, a sign of maturity of an industry when you can use uh, technology without understanding all the details about that one. For example, I, you can imagine that the first cars you could only drive if you were able to repair the car yourself because it would break every few kilometers. Nowadays, you can drive a car without uh, understanding the mechanics. So what you need to uh, know is how to use those technologies, but not necessarily the details of how they work. Um, the technology has done a lot of advances recently, and now, thanks to the data transmission capability, the availability of sensors, distributed sensor with very high density uh, 2D sensing systems. The quantity of data that we can collect has increased uh, dramatically, uh, both in space, so we can have very dense data in space and also in time. Uh, but I think this presents two challenges, one upstream and one downstream of the sensing uh, and data acquisition. Upstream, I would say that the quality of the measurements remains central because acquiring a lot of wrong data uh, is not better than acquiring no data at all. So the quantity can never replace the quality of the measurements. So the uh, uh, understanding, the functioning, the design, and the correct installation of sensor remains central even though it has become much more easy to transmit the data, to store the data, to analyze and visualize the data, but the raw measurement uh, quality still remains important. And what was also mentioned in the previous panel is the downstream problem of uh, being able of transforming this quantity of data into quality of information. So information that can be used by decision makers uh, to uh, take decisions. Um, in some cases, it's quite straightforward if the monitoring system is designed properly to answer to specific questions and it's clear how these events that we are afraid of will materialize, then the monitoring system can be quite easy. For example, if I expect no movement in a tunnel and I detect a movement or a crack, I can localize, identify, put an alarm. That's easy. More complicated cases are slow degradation, material degradation like corrosion or long-term things that are superimposed with environmental changes, changes in loads, etc. I think in this area we are still missing some uh, tools to analyze this data. And I don't think it's necessarily a question of artificial intelligence because even humans have not yet found a very good way to do that in an efficient way. So we cannot train an artificial intelligence if the biological intelligence has not yet solved the problem. Thank, Thank you for this interesting consideration. Uh, uh, and now let's ask uh, Elena Piantelli. Uh, she is a business unit manager at Spectra, which is the exclusive Italian distributor for Trimble. So what is your opinion? You are dealing with a very interesting type of instrument that uh, have been more and more common in our activities. So what uh, is your opinion about that sentence and the actual situation? I, it would be worse if this sentence has been uh, said by a manufacturer, because <laughs> if a manufacturer doesn't know why they produce technology or the application of that technology, this would be a problem. Um, you know, I work for a company that uh, um, worked in the last 14 years to produce technology to maps in a 3D mode, in a 3D way, 
things and to produce coordinates. And if you think about that, this is the base information of each data we collect in monitoring application or in another application. And I think that manufacturers need to solve three challenges. The big one is to produce innovative solution. But in order to do that, as said by Professor Linhart, we have to work with someone that has to manage the problem. If we don't know what we have to, to face, we cannot produce something that is useful. But after the first step, when we start to think about the solution, produce something that could solve this problem, we need to standardize because we need to produce technology that is not one shot, but is a technology that can be replicated and used in several places. So a technology needs to be reliable and robust. Of course, as said before, we have to keep in mind that even if we install technology, we have also to maintain that technology. We have to do maintenance in order to uh, maintain the high level standard of the data we take from this technology itself. But anyway, when we produce this technology and we produce reliable technology, we have to keep in mind that this technology need to be, need to be available for everybody. Not only in Europe, when probably we have money, but everywhere, because everywhere we have installation, we have infrastructures, we have problems to solve. So the task of a manufacturer is also to, to work to reduce cost in production of that technology and to spread that technology, to that technology everywhere. So the main goal, in my opinion, of a manufacturer is to support specifically this moment and to support everybody to move from digitalization to digital transformation. And we are talking about two different words, two different meanings. One thing is to automize something, but we have to keep in mind the importance of the human approach. And on the other hand, is to change the process, we do the things. Thank you, Elena. Sebastian Bragg. Head of International Business Development uh, of Six Sense in France. So, in that sentence, Professor Anna was questioning about uh, the knowledge of the engineers at that time, knowledge of those who were asking for monitoring. So, you as, a, you as a service provider, how you judge nowadays the request that you receive from designer or from engineers for uh, having a monitoring system? Yeah, good morning, everybody. Thank you, uh, Giorgio, for inviting us. Um, I would answer yes, but. Yes, because it's still right what Anna told uh, in uh, 1985. Uh, but the time has changed. Today, uh, we, we, we have no doubt, and everybody here is, uh, is, is truly uh, aware of it, that we need, uh, we have an absolute need of risk management and we have an absolute need of uh, sustainability uh, management in what we do. And this, uh, thanks to the university, the researcher, the manufacturer, the main contractors, uh, in the last decades, the knowledge for instrumentation and monitoring has been spread out in very details. More and more people are trained about uh, I and M today, and it's, it's great. I think that we cannot say that only few now, a very, very uh, large, pe a larger number of people are aware of what is I and M and are trained about it. Uh, this, is a, this is a good thing, but all the change comes with, uh, with uh, some counterparts. And uh, as service, manuf uh, service provider, I would say that the two major counterparts uh, we are facing right now uh, about this uh, uh, spread of the knowledge of the instrumentation of, of mon and monitoring is that uh, even though the knowledge is spread out to everybody or most of, of uh, the stakeholders involved in, uh, in the infrastructures, uh, still uh, one counterpart which is uh, negative is uh, the more we know, the more we give detail and sometimes we resume the instrumentation and monitoring to only means instead of focusing of on the information we need to give at the end. So 
at the end, the discussion is around a sensor, a mean, and not the final objective, which is giving an information to manage a risk or giving an information to manage an asset. Another counterpart is that uh, uh, if it's right that uh, instrumentation and monitoring right now is, uh, is used, commonly used in, uh, in most of the infrastructure and most of the project, uh, there is still uh, a divergence, uh, a divergence between uh, the interest of all the stakeholders. Uh, the culture of instrumentation and monitoring is here, but depending on who you are, you are focusing more on uh, construction risk management with short-term uh, instrumentation. And in the meantime, you have to think about, I think that um, uh, the person from uh, Rebuild and the Metro seat mentioned it before, in the design period, it's important to, to see both aspects, short-term and long-term, which is construction risk management and asset management. So depending who is, who's got the pen, who's got the money, uh, we can sometimes uh, face a problem of uh, divergence in the, in the response we give to all of them. Thank you, Sebastian. So we overcome a little the problem, but uh, something is still open. Some questions are still open. Okay, so let's move to Elena Troncioni. Uh, she probably will see the problem from a little bit different uh, side because uh, she is the head of Italian market for uh, the sales uh, civilian market in eGeos, a leading international player in the earth observation and geospatial information business. So from your point of view, which is the point of view of those who, who are using new, very new technologies or uh, upcoming technologies, what's the situation uh, nowadays uh, in the monitoring market? Okay, does it work? Okay. Uh, first, uh, thank you for uh, this invitation. Uh, yes, I'm, uh, let me say, I bring to this table uh, a little different point of view because I'm looking our infrastructure, our uh, critical infrastructure from the top, from, uh, from the stars, as someone says, uh, so through satellite. I think here I'm the only, uh, I'm, I represent the only one company basing its business only on uh, remote sensing data, so satellite and airborne uh, data. What we brought uh, in uh, structural monitoring, uh, it's mainly connected to interferometric analysis. Uh, so satellite inter interferometric analysis. And I think uh, this is uh, a good example to, to link to this uh, sentence uh, made uh, some years ago. Because uh, as EGEOS, uh, we were the first uh, in the past, uh, in 2003, uh, 2013, uh, 2015, to realize uh, for the uh, Italian Ministry of Environment uh, the whole coverage uh, of uh, the Italian territory with interferometric uh, analysis. So this big project called uh, uh, PST, um, Piano Straordinario di Telerilevamento, um, it was a, a first case in the world, but uh, let me say it has been used only for, uh, by institution, only by, only by, mainly by, for example, ISPRA or some other uh, more advanced region but was not used, uh, for example, was not uh, even known uh, by managers of infrastructure, by manager of local uh, territory and whatever. Why? Because there was not the culture on this new technology, on uh, this, uh, maybe also on monitoring uh, in general. Now some years uh, have passed, uh, now we lead uh, the European ground motion service, uh, so we move from a national to a European scale, scale and we lead also the IRIDE, Ispra mentioned this uh, program before, uh, IRIDE ground motion uh, service, uh, let me say. So uh, the Italian government decided to, to spend the next generation uh, funding um, on uh, ground motion, on realizing a system for producing interferometry on a national scale, on a systematic base. And this is very important because even though we cannot expect that uh, um, a structural inter engineer knows exactly how 
uh, synthetic aperture radar works uh, on board on the satellite and how the whole satellite system, constellation, ground segment, uh, upstream, downstream, blah, 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 how everything uh, works uh, in this, uh, in this uh, space, uh, let me say, domain. It is very important that now structural engineering or uh, geotechnics uh, uh, start knowing uh, that the there is uh, this uh, third, um, these uh, different independent uh, measurement tools uh, that can be used and integrated into traditional standard on or even advanced, uh, clearly, uh, on-site tour. I think this uh, can be, um, let me say, linked uh, to the original question because uh, uh, maybe it is not important to know exactly what's what there is beyond, but it is very important uh, to know what is the portfolio of possibility in measurements uh, and in monitoring uh, in order to uh, include and complement uh, the monitoring for the purpose uh, of the specific monitoring of the infrastructure, the dam, uh, the road, uh, the railways, whatever. Um, so I think that uh, a lot has have been done in the last uh, years. A lot have been done also by this university with uh, courses and um, um, and deepening this, uh, this um, uh, let me say, this knowledge in students, but also in uh, actors uh, who are uh, uh, called to you, who have the opportunity to use uh, these technologies. And I think it's, uh, let me say, we are on the on the right tr track for uh, for improving our monitoring activities. Thank you very much, Elena. Elena. So again, it's a matter of knowledge or culture, as you said, but they are improving, that, that's important. And so now from the stars to the ground, <laughs> uh, or, that's, that's or even point. underground. So. And even underground, uh, or better, to those instruments that uh, John Dynaclet used to classify as contact instruments, not more from stars, but from the ground. So we ask the opinion of uh, Vincenzo Cacci. Vincenzo Cacci is the general manager of CGEO, which is the Italian manufacturer of instruments, uh, and is a, f uh, is a former general manager of uh, Ugenberger and Gruppen, another manufacturing company. So from your perspective as a manufacturer of, let's say, traditional instruments, uh, what the situation of the market? Is something that uh, has overcome the problem that Anna has mentioned, or some problems are still open. Yeah, thank you. Well, uh, it's true from one side that uh, monitoring market, monitoring industry for several years has been quite conservative. But uh, on the other hand, in the last year, in the recent past, a lot of uh, <coughs> new development has been brought to the market. Elena and Elena represented some of them. Uh, so from one side, there are new technology, which we have to consider as a manufacturer. From the other side, uh, there is also an increase in the needs and the request of the end client, which in our case are generally the uh, asset, uh, the asset owners. And uh, talking about the money, uh, culture monitoring that you mentioned before, uh, this is a, a very important topic because we don't have to forget that we work everywhere, uh, but there are worlds area where the monitoring culture is widespread and then the level, let's say, is quite high and you start from a certain point. There are other areas where you really have to make a kind of evangelist mission to train the people to learn about monitoring and what monitoring uh, means. Uh, and also there are different approach uh, regarding the application. For example, if we talk about DEMS monitoring, which was mentioned before, uh, the first uh, instrumented dam, which we have noticed off, is in Switzerland and it's dated back 1923, so 100 years ago. And Georgia was the consultant already there. So <laughs> <laughs> this is because you mentioned that uh, bad <laughs> instruments of CG. <laughs> but for example, uh, monitoring of structure is something uh, relatively new. Uh, so we have also to keep into account these new opportunities. And of course, when the market and when an industry grows up, uh, a lot of newcomers are coming and bringing even more opportunity, which is very good. On the other hand, and I agree with what Sebastian mentioned before, uh, there are also risks which you have to take into account. 
And the biggest risk I see is that we, uh, we should be committed to keep the level of our skills and expertise at very high level. Otherwise, the risk is that the stakeholder will lose the trust in the monitoring, and that would be a big damage for all the stakeholders of monitoring. Thank you. Thank you, Vincenzo. I'm so old that I have to sit down because <laughs> at my age, I have to. Oh, sorry, but I have a problem with my leg. So let's conclude this first uh, round uh, with Vincent Lamour. Vincent Lamour is the Director of Infrastructure Market at Socotec Monitor in France. It's a service company. So what's your opinion about the situation? Yes, thank you, Giorgio, yes. for the invitation. Um, I would agree with this uh, sentence, especially because we know that monitoring is, uh, is uh, complicated, so we have to... Uh, to uh, manage a lot of uh, projects, uh, sensors, technology, and so on. And um, now, I think for the last uh, 40 years, uh, this industry is becoming mature, and so we are entering a new phase. And like in other construction, uh, for instance, for complex construction, we are talking about EPCI uh, contractors, like engineering, procurement, uh, contracting, and uh, installation. And I think we are uh, really in this uh, uh, new era, so of course uh, a service provider has to know a lot of things, uh, he has to be uh, an expert in a lot of things, but of course he cannot be also, he cannot know everything, right? So he has to have, uh, uh, there are many partners, the, um, the technology providers, the researchers and so on, has to uh, put um, uh, efforts in this uh, EPCI uh, new uh, standard. And I would add also another uh, point of view is about trust. Um, of course, monitoring is a part of uh, the construction industry. And the construction industry, it's a chain of trust, right? The asset owner trusts the designer, the design firm. Uh, it trusts the contractor and so on. And as a monitoring service provider, we are part of this uh, trust uh, chain. Uh, we, we are providing uh, reliable data, reliable information. We have to uh, be responsible of all those uh, EPCI uh, segments. And um, of course, we have to, uh, to be uh, independent because we cannot rely uh, on technologies, we cannot rely on the asset owner, we cannot rely on the contractor. So we have to be a third part uh, body uh, to all those other partners. And that's why I think uh, the industry now is more and more mature, and now we have a, a specific role as a monitoring service provider. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think it was it's really important what you said regarding the trust chain. Uh, monitoring should be, and that's my opinion, uh, at the same level of all the other engineering activity in a construction project. So why monitoring is always the last thing? is always something that no one cares, no one considers, until something happens. As uh, we said, uh, Engineer Retighieri said before, when the bridge in Genova collapses, everybody was asking, why, why not monitoring, what have you measured, and so on, but afterwards, unfortunately. Anyway, we have uh, some time for a, a second very quick round uh, of opinions, and I ask you just to give your uh, perspective on uh, what is, in uh, your opinion, the future of monitoring uh, and instrumentation and monitoring from the point of view of manufacturer and service companies, and uh, which will be the role of the manufacturer and service companies. Uh, I know it's a quite, uh, quite wide uh, question, it's, uh, it's a lot of time to answer, but I will ask you just uh, few it's to, to leave uh, to our audience uh, as a reference for these future opportunities for uh, instrumentation and monitoring. Jürgen, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, I think that uh, the challenge is to uh, uh, reach that monitoring will be an essential part of uh, uh, lifespan management of our, of our assets. Monitoring started mainly mm, during construction to confirm design hypotheses. And now we learned, due to some accidents, that uh, we have to monitor uh, our structures over time. Especially, I think, in Europe, where we have a 
quite mature part of infrastructures. I think the, the objective, the challenge is to maintain our infrastructures in safe and functional conditions that we can enlarge the life cycle. And uh, therefore, I think uh, surveillance, which is, uh, I like the term of surveillance, includes inspection and monitoring, should be a fundamental cornerstone and pillar in any asset management uh, program. I think this is a challenge uh, that I know some asset owners are already doing it, but uh, there's still quite a, a big margin to, to improve. And on a technical, just very short way, I think there's also, I expect a lot from, from uh, dynamic monitoring. I think we can get more information from, from dynamic monitoring to be able to calibrate better our our behavior models. Uh, we started with uh, our uh, uh, models, finite element models, and used the observations we made, trying to calibrate in a quite, uh, let's say, uh, rough way. And I think dynamic monitoring will provide us in the future with uh, valuable information to get better models, to make a better uh, follow-up of our, of our structures. So I think uh, the, the comparison is like with the medicine. We have in developed countries normally preventive medicine, healthcare, and we should do the same. Monitor, uh, diagnostic, treat, and prevent uh, problems with, your, with our infrastructures. Thank you, Jürgen. Daniela, you are uh, in a double position of a manufacturer of traditional instrument and innovative ones. So what's your per perspective of the future? Yes, uh, well, I don't consider myself that way. <laughs> I, I think I'm manufacturer of instruments. Good. And uh, that's probably the point I want to bring is that we should work on interoperability of different systems because there's no reason to use an innovative sensor when the traditional works better uh, and vice versa but we need to make sure that they can coexist in the same project and that the data can be analyzed in a uniform way. So I think the future goes in the direction of more easy combination of different technologies, sensing, contact sensing, remote sensing, um, satellite, and that everything can be used in a seamless way to extract the data that, that is useful for, uh, for the owners. And this probably goes also in the direction of separating more and more the data acquisition from the data management and uh, analysis. Because I don't think anybody can be a specialist of all those technologies, but we need the specialists that can take the data, uh, manage it and analyze it independently from the source. So a little bit like has been uh, the basis of success for uh, the uh, computer industry, standardization of uh, protocols, networks, data exchange, even for very different uses. Uh, if we go in the same direction, and we are, uh, it will make it easier to combine the technologies so that uh, the distinction between innovative and traditional can somehow disappear. Thank you, thank you for this. Elena, I know you have uh, some ideas about the future. Yes, of course, we have different challenges. Uh, in my opinion, the, the, big, the biggest one is to share information. Because at the moment, as said before by many uh, other colleagues, uh, many of us collect a lot of data, but nobody shares da those data. So the first of all is to cr create a cloud where everybody can put in information, and probably in the future, not tomorrow morning, but the next week, perhaps, we can start from that data and start working with finite element models and understand the limit of our infrastructure and more. We are talking about even more and more about BIM, 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 Building Information Modeling, is something that is coming inside also Italy, Europe, and so on, is a, another way to put information and to work on the digital twin because digital twin is something that needs to be trained. So if we can be able to talk each other, uh, put together all our domains, and bring the information inside a common element like a digital twin, we can think about the next step. And probably we can uh, solve the, big the biggest problem here, because the biggest problem is expertise. 
we talk about expertise. What is missing here in Italy now to face to all the infrastructure we have to build and to maintain is the competence, are the competencies. So if we can use technology to support humans, probably we can do a big step ahead. Okay, technology which supports, not uh, replace. That's good. <laughs> Sebastian, up to you. Yes, oh, I totally agree that uh, uh, we, we will have uh, more and more data and for sure we will put a lot of energy, a lot of resources to, to build a machine learning system or uh, artificial intelligence and more and more data uh, later on, uh, even if we have new technologies as, like Insa we said just earlier, like uh, 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 image analysis or what, uh, optical fiber, now they're, they're getting common surely in the future when you would take a photo in a social network, it might be used for instrumentation and monitoring, who knows? Uh, what is important is, uh, is uh, among those resources to, to build up a, a new way of sharing data for instrumentation and monitoring, we have to keep in mind that there is a huge challenge remaining. We have to keep a bit of the resources to verify to check the consistency of those data, the availability on a long-term basis of this data and the accuracy of this data. What was told earlier, monitoring the monitoring, monitoring of the monitoring, because if we do not put a bit of resources on this, uh, that will uh, uh, make the work on data analysis uh, much uh, harder. So to ease up the this data analysis, artificial intelligence, I think that we have to manage properly the entrance of the data to make sure that we can uh, take the maximum uh, information about it. Thank you. So sharing of data and amount of data. You all are dealing with a large amount of data. You are the one that are <laughs> using, I think, the largest amount of data. So what's your perspective for the future? So I think that um, we have said in the future we have several challenges uh, to, to face. Uh, one of these uh, will be the amount not only of data but also of emerging technologies. Uh, we have heard about uh, BIM, uh, and intelli artificial intelligence, uh, uh, fiber, uh, dynamic monitoring, uh, and so on. I think uh, the mistake uh, that we can do could be to, let me say, select one of them. I think uh, we should move uh, to a, an approach that is uh, inclusive and to think uh, about monitoring uh, in terms of an ecosystem. We have uh, several uh, opportunities. Uh, we have several technologies uh, and a big amount of data uh, processing capacity, whatever, um, and we have uh, processes uh, to connect uh, all this information. So maybe we can use a satellite for a pre-screening, uh, then a certain type of uh, uh, on-site sensor, then decide to realize the infrastructure with a sensor integrated within the infrastructure and so on. So I think that one of the challenges will be to include uh, all uh, the possibility that we have uh, at our ends, uh, at disposal at our ends, uh, in order to provide uh, probably not uh, a 1% uh, information, 100% information about the infrastructure, but at least to, uh, to arrive closer to this number in order to have a uh, let, let me say, a, a wall knowledge uh, of uh, what, uh, what is the object of our observation. Thank you, Elena. Vincenzo, what do you think about? Yeah, but let's say from the technical point of view, for sure there would be a, a lot of new development. Uh, my colleague already expressed this. I think the only differentiation can be between the surface instruments and the underground instruments. The surface instruments, I can see an hyperbolic uh, development, the underground a little bit more incremental uh, with the current technology. Uh, another uh, good opportunity is the monitoring of monitoring, which was mentioned before at the previous roundtable. So standardization will be more and more, so this will create the market condition. And the third point, which is the real 
uh, question, in my opinion, is what will happen to the chain of monitoring that Vincent mentioned before? So what will happen to this chain? Uh, because uh, some of our uh, competitors already changed their uh, business model and going straight to the, to the end customer, to the asset owner, bringing everything with them. Uh, in any case, all these improvement, uh, business model, uh, new technologies, and the regula regulation of the monitoring, uh, in my opinion, I guess, and I hope, uh, will bring the monitoring not any longer as a niche market, but as a standard branch of engineering as it should be. And this is also very good uh, that we say this at the university, because it can be, uh, let's say, a potential career for the young people which is here. Thank you. Vincent, up to you yes. to conclude <coughs> this second round. Please. Before the lunch, so yeah, I will yeah, be short. Yeah. <laughs> it must be very short. <laughs> you know, I will uh, totally agree with you, and I will even go further. I think, uh, yeah, as uh, our industry is getting more mature, I think we will go into more uh, guidelines, even more like regulation. I think uh, our uh, industry will be uh, more regulated uh, because we see that. Uh, when you're talking about risk, risk mitigation, uh, of course, uh, the trust has to be done by regulation, of course, and with insurance and so on. So for me, that's a mega trend in our industry is to, is to, uh, to go with more guidelines and at some, in some case, some regulation so that we know exactly that uh, we have a very qualitative approach of our, of our work. Uh, the second uh, trend I see uh, um, is more like, uh, uh, so the, the regulation also is, it can be good, it can be bad, uh, but we see also that uh, this uh, monitoring uh, will be, uh, um, how do you say that, uh, uh, so the regulation uh, cannot do everything, so we will have to do a lot of uh, investment in training, in, in university research and so on, so that uh, uh, the complete industry uh, can benefit of uh, of uh, an ecosystem of uh, universities and research labs. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. I think we got a lot of interesting points from this discussion. I just want to underline one because the time is running. And uh, this, it is the inclusive approach which has been mentioned. I think that uh, one of the biggest mistakes we can do is to say I am focused on uh, contact instrument, I am focused on uh, this type of instrument, I'm focused on satellite, blah, 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 blah. No, monitoring the future, that's my opinion, will be something inclusive. And we have to be able to define the best solution for each problem. So with this, uh, I thank you, I thank you very much um, all the panelists uh, for being here and for the uh, messages that they passed us. So thank you very much and to everybody. <laughs>
and thank you very much to them. They were fundamental to make this event uh, real and to organize everything. Uh, and they are fundamental for what is coming now, because this afternoon there will be the opening of the exhibition and the exhibition, the real uh, protagonists of the exhibitions will be uh, in the expo, will be the uh, companies uh, with their tools. That uh, is not just um, a selling part, it is important as well, but it's just an additional way to learn touching tools, discussing with people that create technologies and so on. So please don't lose this opportunity. But I will come back to this point at the end. Uh, companies are coming from 16 countries, so thank you to all of them for joining us. And we had uh, um, an attendance of approximately 200 people this morning. So this is a very interesting number. Uh, I'm really happy about this. We decided this year for the first time, as I told you before, to make something that was open to anyone, uh, and we really hope that this will help in spread uh, the knowledge uh, and the monitoring culture. So uh, coming to more technical stuff, um, you see that uh, we discussed this morning about asset management and construction. Uh, there was these two main lines, and, and I'm very happy uh, to see that um, there was uh, probably more discussion on what is existing than what we are building of new. Uh, and this is something that is uh, make me feeling that uh, the work that our community has done over the last year uh, has been done very well. Because up to five years ago, this is not absolutely obvious. We were talking quite a lot about uh, monitoring during construction, uh, safety, but all this stuff about asset management, prioritization, uh, and predictive maintenance. So monitoring for this purpose was not a standard, except for few countries and few places. And now it's becoming. And, and the, this morning uh, discussions demonstrated um, this point. So uh, this is a very crucial point anyway from my point of view because I see uh, in the community and also in the people that were here, some of them were people working in the monitoring, fans of monitoring, but some others were just users or people that were not dealing with monitoring or were not considering monitoring a few years ago. So I see a lot of excitement about the potential of monitoring for um, asset management, uh, for risk, uh, resilience, uh, like also from coming from the name of this event, and so on. But the point is that I'm a little bit worried about this excitement uh, because uh, I see a risk behind this, and it is the excess of expectation. As someone has said before, uh, there is a uh, request of very, very simple answers to very, very complex questions. And this is a huge risk because at present, uh, we are not ready from my point of view. We have uh, 30 companies exhibiting, uh, exhibiting instruments, and this is fantastic because it means the technology is there. Uh, there are persons like us, a co um, community that is growing, but has been already said also in the last table uh, and the last comment that potentially we need more people more trained people, more expert on this, that are able, as said in other roundtables, to translate data into information. We can trust a little bit today someone is more uh, happy, especially younger people are more uh, looking to artificial intelligence, uh, less young people uh, are more looking to human factors, Giorgio, I'm thinking of you, of course, uh, and not only you. Um, but uh, whatever it is, uh, we need something more. Artificial intelligence can be a great chance, but it's not ready. And, and as a human factor persons, we are probably not ready 100%. So um, what, what I think is very important is to continue to tell and to spread the potential of monitoring to a wider community, uh, but at the same time, it's very important that we try to say that you have to keep calm. So owners, asset manager, keep calm. Don't expect after that uh, single box has been installed on a bridge that the day after you are totally safe. That's not the reality. You will last uh, months and potentially years because uh, before we really are able to predict a failure or something. 
So uh, from this point of view, I suggest also manufacturers and people from the industry that are happy to show how much potential is a technology, but also to say, okay, this is the technology, it works very well, I worked for 10 years to make it so effective, but before solving issues, take care. It's a process, we are starting. And the main reason for this is that the history of monitoring is not so long. If you can go to the next slide, you can see here, uh, I, this is an effort I did um, a few years ago and that I'm trying to update, but it's becoming more and more complex to update this table. Uh, and you see that uh, at early uh, 50s, so we are talking about uh, 70 years ago, more or less when most of the uh, dams in Italy were built. So it means that when we started to build some of the main infrastructure that we are using today in the developed countries, monitoring was really a small thing. Few solutions were available, few technologies. And over the last 50, 70 years, we had an incredible growth of this. But that means that the history is not so long. And to create a culture, uh, you need the history. We have a, a great cultural heritage in Italy and in many other countries because we have a long history. So time is necessary. Geology knows that, geologists know very well that to make a uh, consolidation process you can try to speed up, but at a certain time you need time. So time is important and if we try to rush too much we will not arrive at the right end. So um, I think the only solution to this point uh, uh, is uh, the culture of training. And I'm very happy that we are here today in, a, in an international course, happy to organize this since nine years. I think we have to do more, but I hope someone else will start and more people will start to make training. Training is very important. So the, we need the culture of training. And of course, we have to train the culture. So we have not to train only the technology, the technique, the solution. We have to try to train the culture and telling people what they can expect is uh, training the culture. Uh, and this is very important um, because otherwise uh, most of the dissatisfaction become from an excess of expectation. So take care about this point. Of course, we are at the university, and uh, one message that I can launch uh, here, as said before, is the importance to increase the teaching of monitoring at the university level. Because the basic culture of any professional starts from the university. And to be honest, I don't see so much training courses specifically dedicated in civil engineering and geology uh, classes about monitoring. So this is something we have to, to consider seriously, but we need good professors that are able to teach and so on. So it's, a, it's not, again, a very, very short path that can be solved in a few, in a few days and also in a few years. So uh, in this perspective, what I'm very happy about, on the contrary, is, uh, uh, is what is merging and this uh, scenario where we have a lot of people from the academia, but also a lot of people from the industry, that they are together, close one to the other, discussing, exchanging ideas, is very, very important. So for this reason, uh, please come also this afternoon to the expo. Uh, there will be two buses just to bring you there, uh, and there will be also other two days tomorrow and the day after tomorrow for this option. Uh, and so um, I think that the brilliant future, as um, uh, some countries uh, has showed us, is putting together academia and the industry, discuss more exchange ideas. Uh, we have not to be skeptical about what is different. We need absolutely to talk more together. And this is, in my view, is starting to happen. And this uh, is very important for the future. So uh, it looks my these sentences are more or less a conclusion of my talk, but this is not a conclusion because we are just concluding the first half of the day of the first day of the course. So there will be also uh, still days up to Saturday when we will make training, exchange, discussion. Uh, there will be uh, an exhibition. You have a photo, but uh, you can see uh, in person in, uh, in a while. There will be some master classes covering all the topics of monitoring from monitoring dams, tunnels, bridges, highways, railways, uh, uh, wind turbines uh, and uh, landslides, and I forget someone. Uh, there are eight or nine, if I were a member. Um, and uh, there will be some live demos. 
that's for the first time, there will be some parallel sessions. It means that while there will be the master classes, companies, each company that is uh, uh, in the high part of this, um, uh, just for a matter of time, we, we were not allowed to provide all the chance, but uh, those companies that are uh, Platinum of Gold sponsor will have the chance to make a presentation about the technology, a live demonstration, because see how an instrument can be installed, how long is it, is providing practical knowledge that is very important also for people working in, in theoretical um, stuffs. So, uh, I'm close to the, to the conclusion. Uh, of this uh, of this conclusion and um, technical information for those I hope most of you are joining us at the ex Cartiera Latina for the uh, expo at one so now uh, there will be uh, a bus starting the first bus has to be taken uh, primarily by exhibitors this is just because they, some of them has to finalize the installation uh, in the expo area, and so there will be a first bus that is already available. You have to group in the terrace that is just uh, uh, where you entered in front of the registration desk. You can group there. Uh, the first group, please start with the exhibitor. So all the exhibitors have the chance, uh, have the priority to take the first bus. And the second bus will be available in 15 minutes, 20 minutes from now. So you can go there, first group can go for uh, the first, primarily exhibitors. I probably already said before, but anyway, it's better to repeat. Uh, and uh, the second is for anyone that want to join us. If someone remain uh, without a seat, uh, I'm going with a car and they have four seats. So please, there is also <laughs> this chance in case this, uh, some problem happen. So thank you very much to anyone. I hope you, you enjoyed, and I will clap uh, our hands for all the people that attended. And thank you. Sorry guys, just uh, an important information from the marketing side, okay? We have to market our effort to train the culture and uh, create a culture of training. So can you please come here, you can take a picture all together before going to the terrace. Come on guys, we can take a picture. The stage is large. There are some comms if you want. Come on, guys. Come on for the picture. Come on, guys, for the picture. <laughs> Don't worry, no risk. Wow. The stage is large, but you are too much, probably. <laughs> okay, please let us know when we have to smile. And
<laughs> it's a couple of minutes that we are smiling. <laughs> Thank you. So, first group exhibitors.